Hello and welcome to Achievement Hunting 101. I'm Fufu Cuddly Poof and this is level 181. Joining me tonight is Big L. Give me all them chibis. Koosh Boos. It's an honor just to be nominated to be on the panel tonight. <laughs> and Rocker Dude. Uh, hello and how do you do? I do pretty good. But yes, this week we we are talking about the Chivis. It is all about the H one hundred and one award ceremony. Thank you all to those that actually filled out our sheets, gave us some nominees. But with further ado, without further ado, let's get into the results. Let's see who actually won this prestigious award ceremony, and each comes with a million dollar check. So congratulations to the winners on that. Do I get a million dollars? No, just the winners. Oh. I can guarantee you did not win. Do I get a sandwich? Nobody on staff can actually win. I can win a sandwich. Please tell me I can win a sandwich. Uh, There's a strong possibility that you may may or may not. (laughs) I'll take it. All right. So I want to take it to the man that actually did all the legwork for this. Corey. Yes, hello, welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is the 2021 Chivis presented by Subway and Achievement Hunting 101. And Knob Polishers. And Knob Polishers, thank you for the uh, the generous funding. Well, we came up with eight different categories, I believe, including Game of the Year, and went to our patrons for their nominee list those nominees were then coagulated regurgitated and came out with a top four or five in some cases then you guys voted on those nominees and now here are the winners so we're going to start with a localized category best vccw competition now this stands for vulgar and chewy's challenge Wrestling, Ding. something. Yeah, wrestling. Um, <laughs> it it has now been <laughs> rebranded. Enough. If Close you enough. have not been in the Discord to the Achievement Hunting League, the AHL. So, if you are new to the Discord, not in the Discord, in the Discord, and confused as much as I am, this new AHL league that you're seeing talked about. Well, this is the replacement for VCCW. It, it contains. All kinds of different various contests, competitions, just fun things to do together and track throughout the year. And last year in 2021, there were a multitude of competitions and the top four were Star Wars Month, Year of the Assassin, Zitalika, and King of the Red Ring. Now, before I open this fancy envelope and reveal the winner. What do you guys think about the VCCW now the AH league? What was your favorite competition from that past year, whether it was the top four or not? Well, I know I voted, uh, but look at these four nominees. I can't remember. I think I went with year of the assassin (laughs) because I, because I like assassin's creed and I also was involved in a whole lot of assassin's creed boosts. So I feel confident (laughs) <laughs> Final answer that my pick was probably very most likely maybe Year of the Assassin, uh, just because, like I said, I like those games, and uh, we had a whole lot of coordinated effort going through boosting, uh, you know, uh, Black Flag, both uh, versions of Black Flag, and we did Brotherhood, and we did all that stuff. So for me, I spent most of my time this year, I think, or at least the first half of the year, uh, deeply steeped in Assassin's Creed, and for me, that was really uh, where it was at for the year it's the only year long competition out of that bunch everything else was pretty much for a month and uh, mm-hmm. that one was all year long so without further ado let's check Ooh. and see if that one was the can top I talk? pick uh, afterwards can i oh and it was year of the assassin oh I mean, not that it was a competition uh to guess it but just by the narrowest of margins at 32.2 percent of the votes 
uh, Year of the Assassins won out. Now, uh, L, why don't you go ahead and uh, let me know about what you think about these competitions? Oh. Well, I was actually going to quickly uh, summarize all four of those. Um, the King of the... Uh, they were all very different, which so I like all these nominees. The King of the Red Ring, of course, uh, has to do with playing Xbox 360 games. Uh, Zitalaika was an interesting one where people came together to fight this uh, giant robot, I believe. And if you played Zitalaika... Dragon. If you played... Oh, yeah, something. If you played uh, Z- uh, Zitalon games or Radalaika games, you actually uh, lost points for your team. Year of the Assassin, of course, was Assassin's Creed. And Star Wars Month is the one I voted for because um, unlike G-Task, where it's true achievement, uh, different score, this was straight gamer score. And it has been years since G-Task had that formula. So everyone, uh, there was two teams and people just went buck wild getting gamer score. It was no, insane. No, no. Am I wrong? No. no Tell me. More than two teams. Oh, yeah. Um, four? Damn. There, that was back in May. Actually, I can't remember. I'm old. Okay, okay. There were two teams, <laughs> but there there was also the ability to uh, recruit. Oh, the bounty hunters. Yeah, bounty yes. hunters. Yes, that's right. And the bounty hunters would then go on the other side. So it wasn't just a straight up uh, two teams. There was there was bidding involved, and there was a lot. Of, the I Empire. About that. that was kind of fun. And the mm-hmm. um, good guys. <laughs> there was a lot of spec talk. <laughs> yes, that was, that was probably my favorite as well. Um, we, we separated everybody into, uh, discord channels. Um, and yeah, the smack talk, I think just elevated it enough to make it fun. And if you're like me and, and, and Koosh and you just, you save those easy games, you just don't play them mm. and you have just a consolidated month to just veg out on them and, and hate yourself at the end of the month. Hey, it's only one month gone and you did your team good. So yeah, the that easy games are my good. Favorite. Easy games are good for contests, and also um, a couple times a year where uh, Xbox gives you free money for getting gamer score. Yep. Or when the people that have challenged you to a competition to complete things have forgotten, and you just kind of <laughs> sneak in at the end, hypothetically. Hypothetically. <laughs> All, All right, right. and assassin. What? That's right. And uh, just, just one, to one, one thing to say to that. Thank you to thank you for Chewy. Or to Chewie mm-hmm. for doing all this. He puts in so much work and he's really the brains behind a lot of this. Like Vulgar and Jay Black and others help, but Chewie's the one that really got this off the ground got all these off the ground. So thank you to him and the others that, that host all these amazing competitions. Uh, speaking of amazing competitions, uh, I do want to give a little bit uh of a roundup uh somewhat for twenty twenty two because Like I mentioned, the Achievement Hunting League is in full swing. Uh, There are contests galore. There are contests that have you competing in other contests in order to get points. It's crazy. Um, And just some of those things that are going on right now, the RTDL, longstanding random to-do list competition. Uh, BCM is back with another year. Better Completions Matter. Uh, we got Gamertag Challenge, Kushmoosh. Uh, runs that every single month. It does a fantastic job. Frame Holes Completion Challenge, that is a yearly competition where you need to complete games based on certain categories. Vulgar's running an extra credit competition. There's a Goal Getter 2.0. Uh, following the year of the Assassin, we have tw- 2020 Tomb Raider. So this is now the year of the Tomb Raider, as Chewy mm-hmm. on Ice has called it. And then uh, a couple others to include Inigo Montoya and Dude with the Faces uh, Brainchild Competition, where they want you to race through the year with racing games. And then uh, my current favorite one, Trek Craft, crafted by Skeptical Mario. And we are currently building rocket ships to go somewhere and hopefully make our destination. And that is just January. We are 11 days into the year. We just keep talking about this thing, but one last thing to mention. Uh, Iron <laughs> Fist of Snuff and um, who's helping him out? EOJ. 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 They have very graciously reopened the uh, the ability to get into the BCM. Normally it's closed by now. You know, The sign-up period is closed and then it's locked for the year. But because of the interest in the AHL, because these guys are uh, you know on the Discord and they're seeing all the, the excitement about the AHL, they have opened that back up until the 17th. So six days from the day of recording, 
uh, even less by the time you hear this, assuming you know there's a podcast, mm. uh, if you want to get signed up and get included in this and have that be uh, something that you can potentially earn points in the AHL from, you need to get on that right now. And, and details are in BCM channel. They're also in the AHL channel. You can ask there and uh, get that possibility open for yourself. <laughs> hey, that's great. I did not know that they were uh, opening that back up. Uh, it's it's really great. You, you don't have to go in swinging, thinking that you're going to win because, you know, people preload and stuff like that. Um, this year, it's, it's even better. Uh, just like last year, they have automated completion. So you don't have to report your own completions, which was kind of a deterrent for me. And uh, you just got to report your bonuses, I believe. So those uh, those happen every month. Uh, and then uh, there's other things integrated into that that you're trying to get. Like, I think you're trying to get completion with every letter of the alphabet. Uh, frame holes thing is kind of weaved in there. So uh, lots of double dipping that you can do. And, and that's really cool that they opened that back up. And All right. Just another thing about the contest, you know, you. one more thing. Uh, <laughs> just one more. Just 10 more. Uh, XNeo21, he will also probably be doing a year of the Vayner. So that you can also look out for that. If it's not on this week's show, it'll probably be on next week's show, but he'll be doing some sort of a wrap-up that will add on to the show after this, so keep a listen for that. Now, I anything, think else, anything else, Kenny, since you I compete in so many contests? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, moving out of our localized ring, we're going to take a look at uh, what has happened around uh, gaming, and specifically Xbox this year, and we're going to start with Game Pass. Best Game Pass Editions is our next category. Our four nominees happen to be Halo Infinite, Forza Horizon 5, so a little bit of recency bias there, Psychonauts 2, and somehow Project Winter. How many U's are in Project Winter? Because it's just littered with them. I don't I, I, I don't know, but uh, Over oh, the Pond must be Eternal Winter because they sure love this game. That now, before do. we announce that winner, let's talk about each of these games. As I mentioned, uh, and it, well, kind of Koosh as well, the uh, the Euro Boosting Channel definitely got into Project Winter uh, this year. There was a lot of great boost. I even joined in on some of them. Uh, it's a fun game, uh, social deception, Among Us like game where you're uh, getting resources and trying to fix stuff before uh, like the big storm comes or you get killed by the uh, the vandal of the group, which you don't know who that is. It's been a while since I played it, so it could be a little off in there, but I think that's a pretty good description. Um, and, and like we said, there's a, definitely a dedicated group that uh, may have gotten that into more than one category this year. So that's Project Winter. Anybody want to tell me about the, any of the other ones? Well, I think I'm the expert on Halo Infinite. So. Surely. Oh, I would love to hear what you have to say. So I should probably just let <laughs> someone else. Well, I want to know. Pressure. I want to know how Project Good Winter help. was nominated for Best Racing Game. Like, who is doing this? Damn Euros. Uh, I, I should I should probably talk about Forza Horizon 5. Because that's what I played the most. Oh, uh, that racing game. Left. Yes. Uh, now that game. Um, ooh, boy. Uh, it kind of came. It's pretty. I don't want to say it came out of nowhere, but it was great that we got this for free uh, on Game Pass day one. And I know a bunch of people were so excited about this that they went out and they uh, bought, they spent money when they didn't need to, and they did it so they could get in you know, three days or earlier. <laughs> three days earlier, which is still, you know, can be measured. $45 in to get in three days earlier. Yes, and to have access to the DLC and all that fun stuff. Uh, get a couple little extra, you know, you know, fun little dangly things. Uh, yeah, so Forza Horizon 5, but it also had issues. It had lots of server issues, which I'm kind of surprised. Uh, well, I shouldn't. No, I'm not surprised because I don't <laughs> know who won. Um, I, I'm a little surprised it did so well uh, across all the categories to be nominated because of those server issues and continuing issues with achievements and challenges. As time has gone, it's still not a perfectly smooth uh, launch. It's still got a couple rough spots, but it is much better than it was when it first came out. Uh, it is it is the top racing game in my mind for my type of racing, which is you know arcade, uh, arcade-ish, but not not sim, but uh, you know still fun. Um, 
yeah, Forza Horizon Five. It's a it's a killer, man, uh, and and it's only going to get better. Uh, I hope. I like to echo his thoughts. I also personally chose Forza Horizon Five for this category. Forza and well, racing games in general are not something that I would ever think of buying. I don't ever gravitate to those. So Forza being in Game Pass is is an amazing thing for me because I would never play this game. I'm not going to spend money to buy this game. It's just not my cup of tea. Like Halo Infinite, however, if that wasn't in Game Pass, I was going to buy that. I'm going to play the next Halo. I'm going I would buy that. So Forza Horizon five going in Game Pass and being free. Yeah. That got that got my uh vote for this year. Did they fix the issues? Because I'll be honest, that turned me off from well, reports. I played it at uh, release. And... One of the big issues was the, um, I forget what they called them specifically, but it's like the, the events that would pop up every oh. 15 minutes or whatever. Yeah, con- For- the convoy type stuff. Yeah, yeah, they were Roman, horrible. There's a new name for them. They were so bad. I can't remember what they called, but they were horrible. Uh, yeah. you, you would start, you would be in different shards, you wouldn't see other people. Sometimes you'd collide with people that you, you shouldn't be colliding with in like a, uh, you know, uh, a, <clears throat> um, you know, trying to, to slip, slide all over the road and you're bumping into people that Drift. you shouldn't. You should be able to just go right through them. Uh, all kinds of crazy issues. They fixed those. Uh, they, they, the scoring was also super high. Like you had to get high numbers and they fixed that to the point where it's almost easier just to do it by yourself now because it scales with the number of people. <laughs> Um, wow. So, so rather than getting you know noobs who don't know how to do the things, um, you could just knock it out by yourself. They fixed that. They've uh, you know they, they've just made improvements all over. The stability is there. Like no longer are you driving at 200 miles an hour and then you stop, like dead stop, no car damage or anything, but you just stop and then you have to start up again. Uh, that stuff's all figured out. You know when a game's that popular, I'm sure they weren't able to simulate that type of network traffic and. And congestion on the servers and all that fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's gotten way better. There's still a couple issues, um, but uh, yeah, it is very different from when it launched. Yes. All right. Um, my vote was for Halo, and that's without even playing the campaign yet. Um, like I said, Forza uh, disappointed me. At launch, I, we'll get back in there eventually. Uh, Project Winter, I never played. And Psychonauts, I'm sure, is amazing. But I have not played that either. So I guess Halo kind of wins by default. I actually voted for, initially, I nominated Hades because that was a surprise. And I think the others were known. You know, the first-person games are pretty much known to be coming to Game Pass at this point. So... I nominated right. Hades, but I think we'll be seeing uh, a little more of that game later. But that's what I originally voted for. Well, in a year of fabulous Game Pass editions, such as the Bethesda series, uh, Rain on Your Parade, MLB The Show, uh, I Yakuza, that was added. Uh, all of those were added this past year, as long as TA's list can be believed. Um, none of those were even nominated, uh, but in my wow. eyes, they were stellar games. Uh, but from the four that were, we do have a winner by a good bit. 39, almost 40% of the vote. Uh, who do we think it is? Drum roll, please. It's Halo Infinite, of course. Whoa. Of course it's Halo Infinite. Like El said, I have also uh, I've played Campaign. I've I haven't beat it yet, but I have played it. But I have put probably sixty hours into the uh, online, and uh, that says so much. I, I play it every day. Uh, I was playing it just before we sat down to record, and uh, yeah, it's it's really fun. I, I do think there's some improvements that can be made, but uh, among the four, it's definitely where I got the most value for my money. Uh, Psychonauts 2 is a really great game, but it's really hard to compare it to some of these AAA blockbusters. Project Winter has no business being here, but <laughs> what's what's that Dang. for me to say? 
<laughs> just saying. how many how many times did Lego vote? I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I Let's do see. have I'd like to uh, I do have the back end stuff and nobody and nominated multiple times voting. I, I don't know. Uh, we, we did have quite a bit of participation in voting. So that that is appreciated. But uh, they they didn't vote enough for Project Winner to win. Yeah, I mean, I think I think I was mostly weighing these based on like value. Like, ob- and so obviously the two heavy hitters, the two, the two, the only two that would possibly have a chance of winning where halo infinite and, and forza horizon 5 in my mind i um, agree and halo infinite i have to say i enjoy it it's fun it really speaks um, volumes yeah it's fun it's uh when nate and Corey are praising halo infinite they that played means more it's than a we good have. game <laughs> yeah I, well, I haven't done 60 hours but uh i'm surprised oh that gosh. i actually enjoy it I, I'm, I in there, myself... I'm in there every every day at least getting the you know play the game xp uh to level up mm. like once typically and uh I, i'm in there every week now getting the, the weeklies done or whatever events going on i, I max those out so uh yeah I, i'm I digging hate, it i hate that i'm doing the challenges and i'm like well if i just played every day i could i could get the blue armor um you know because i'm not paying for a pass so everything i'm getting is free which means i have to put in like long stretches of gameplay oh uh, yeah get stuff. And I'm I, like, I why do i care why do I care about this stupid piece of armor? I'm never gonna. I have the pass, uh, yeah, and I and I don't care. I, I'm playing. You don't care. My okay. armor set is something you unlock very early on, and it's very basic. It's just all red. My problem is I do care. <laughs> I do care, but I I'm then I question myself like why do I care? Because I'm not gonna. Play I this question like myself forever. because the armor that I really like, the one that I want, mm-hmm. that that costs mm-hmm. money in the store. You can't earn it. You have to buy. Which one is that? Uh, it's particularly the space station gaming one. It's like black. And uh, but it's like shiny black. It's not like dirty armor. And then it has like no, no, orange well, accents. Yeah. Okay, I haven't seen that one. Huh? It looks really good. I don't good. know that one. Well, looking forward to 2022. Our next category is most anticipated 2022 releases. Uh, now, of course, big names uh, got put onto the nominee list. And so uh, that's what we went with. And uh, just to uh, go over them quickly, we have Elden Ring. So a lot of people are obviously excited about Elden Ring. Uh, I don't get it so much, but that's fine. Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. Mm -hmm. This was shown after the most recent trailer. So I I guess people are still hyped for it. Uh, I think it's going to be just okay. Uh, Now, the clear winner is going to be Tunic, uh, I think, (laughs) because that will come out. That's 2023, right? We're talking about 2023 releases? Exactly. Uh, no, but speaking of Maybe. 2023, Lord of the Rings Gollum, that, that will be here as well. <laughs> right. So, Ouch. Out of all <laughs> of not the, wrong. Out of the all right. most anticipated uh, games here, which ones are you guys looking forward to the most? Let's start with Kenny this time. Suicide Squad. Why that, is that? that? Was... I forgot. You're a DC guy. I'm a superhero guy, but yes, yeah. I do lean DC. I I like I like I said I li- I lean DC I really like DC. Um, I think the game looks like it's gonna be fun. I really am just looking forward to it. I think I think it's gonna be good. And the idea of killing the Justice League, I'm all for it. Like I, even even Diana Troy, do what? Even even Wonder Woman, you want to kill Wonder Woman? Being able to play as a bad guy. And being able to kill the good guy is extremely appealing. Like I would love to play, you know, as um, Hydra and killing Captain America and everyone. I've got a Captain America shirt on right now. Like uh, Captain America is probably my favorite Marvel superhero. But being able to play as the Red Skull or something like that and killing him, I'm all for it. It's such a different dynamic for a game. The bad guy never wins. Any game where the bad guy wins, I'm probably going to be into it. I don't know. I think we need to see more from it before it uh, is deemed something I, I think I need to play. I'll, I'm just surprised that that, that uh, wins out over your love of literature, uh, you know, Lord <laughs> of the Rings, and and also your love of like fantasy, like sword stuff, like Skyrim ish stuff with Elden Ring. <clears throat> Elden Ring looks cool, but I've heard it's like a Souls-like game, which is a turnoff. I don't really want to play something like that. And Lord of Rings, 
I don't I think I feel like I've mentioned this on the show. I know nothing about that series. The Lord of Rings could not be more of a Kenny property, and I've never watched them. I really want to, I just haven't. So this one almost actually wins by default when you look when I look at these four. By default, man. You just did that to Tunic. I can't believe you. I did. What? Well, I can understand not going for Tunic because it's not coming out ever. But um, we're less. Than, I mean, we're I'm, like two months away. I want. So you say. I, I so want Tunic to be real. I so want it to be good. <laughs> uh, and I just I have to keep dissing it in order to lower my expectations to the point where I can actually enjoy the game. Um, I, I did the same with Halo Infinite. <laughs> for me, because I'm just going to jump in and and. I don't know who you're going to call next, but I think it's tough. Uh, I, I'm kind of torn between Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, because I just love Rocksteady. Um, That's who, there's another reason why I'm looking forward to that. They they are apparently the only developer besides whoever did Wolverine uh, who know how to do video games uh, for superheroes. Who did do Wolverine? And, and Lord of the Rings Gollum, I just had so much fun last year uh, beating my head against um, the Shadow of Mordor games. That I will take anything <laughs> that's even closely related to it, um, uh, and so I'm hoping that Gollum is good. I don't know that it will be, but uh, just what we saw, I thought it has a chance. Um, but yeah, so but once again, this is anticipated. I want to see what they do with Gollum. I I really think Suicide Squad is going to be good, but it's I get worried when you split it up. You don't have one main character, but you have a whole bunch of different characters. So like, are they not going to all be super awesome? Like. I just don't know. I don't know how it's going to work out, but that's what I want. I want Suicide Squad to be super cool. And on the Tunic side, the indie side of stuff, man, I hope it's good. But, uh, oh, boy, I, I would I'd probably pick Suicide Squad. I looked it up. We, when this podcast, uh, well, oh boy. I don't know what time it will be. March 16th. We are so close to Tunic. We are so close. What? Yeah, all right. Now I need to look up Tunic because I've got like three different games in my head. It's uh, Zelda Fox. Be. L, what are you looking yeah, forward to yeah, this what, year? That's what I thought. Um, none of these. That's fair. But if I had to choose one, it would be Elden Ring. Mostly because really, uh, it's got L in the title. <laughs> <laughs> but, that sounds uh, about the right reason. That, that actually makes sense. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird, but that makes that's sense. That's such an L answer. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, Tunic looks cutesy and fun. Maybe if I'm in the right mood for that. But now I feel like I want something dark and gritty, like a like a Rise or something like that. And that trailer is just insane. And maybe it just has too much hype behind it. But Elden Ring, out of those four, uh, looked the coolest to me. Um. My actual answer of the game I'm looking most forward to in 2022 is, uh, of course, Xbox. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. I cannot tell you how is hyped I am. Is that confirmed for this year? It doesn't yes. Make yes. It oh, is. I did not know that. It, I mean, the, the release date right now is just 2022. <laughs> um, but I just read ah, a recent so article next year. that... Um, on Steam, the pre-order says coming soon. So I'm thinking it's coming. It's going to be out this year. I don't think it'll be delayed again. I think mid? I it is so. It is is that kind of like coming soon for pre-order? You think mid? I, uh, I'm hoping. I'm thinking first quarter. I'm, I'm, I'm being optimistic. First quarter. Okay. Man, I forgot about that game. I, I'm sorry not to pick a, a, Looks so good. Know, a $60 game, but <laughs> this is the one that I would... I'm I'm gonna hope that it comes to Game Pass, but if not, I'll probably pick it up day one, pay whatever it costs, and hope that I can convince three other people to do the same and play it with me. It won't take much convincing for me to buy it. There you go. Corey, so, do you have thoughts? So uh, four, sorry, on that, that, or in general? No, no, just uh, yeah, for Both. your your anticipated. Uh, I I mean I, I don't look too far in the head. You know, I'm a week to week kind of guy. Right now, I'm looking forward to. Uh, the, the weeb Picross coming out next week. Oh, that looks fun. <laughs> I thought you about the, the dog game. What's that called again? Uh, paparazzi. No. Well, uh, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about maybe. stuff maybe. I'm excited about later. Um, which one will surprise you? 
Anyways, the most anticipated 2022 release as picked by you guys, the viewer, is... Elden Ring. Elden Ring yes. won again. No real surprise. I can't believe... No, I'm surprised. I can't believe that this community that likes easy gamer score is is excited about an RPG. <laughs> yeah, I think they're just aboard the hype train. The, the, none of, like, 10% of them will actually play it. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's what we're looking at here. Fun fact, Elden Ring won most anticipated uh, game at the Game Awards two years in a row. <laughs> did it really? Yes. Check that, I guess. That makes sense. Yes. I did not know that. But they they do like the same thing we're doing. Most anticipated in the the next year, we're doing you know this the rest of this year, and it won two years in a row because it gets pushed back. Anyways, going on to one of the uh, categories that talks about your, uh, I guess your best of the worst, right? The category is best games with gold for twenty twenty one. We did send out a list, and you guys responded with Gears Five. Uh, which I guess is a good choice if you don't have Game Pass. Uh, Resident Evil HD, popular pick, I guess, uh, among Kusha's brain. <laughs> Little Nightmares, uh, you know, good game, uh, as, as they say. And then, of course, the, uh, the grand finale, uh, Moving Out, was on there sure. as well. Those are our top four picks as chosen by the patrons. Um, Kush, out of those four or a different one, what was your favorite games with gold this past year? I have no idea what I voted for, but looking at the <laughs> four that are here, I feel like I would have gone for, of course, you know, uh, the, the well-known genre of limbo, like, uh, little nightmares. I, I know I like that. I probably threw a vote that way. Uh, but moving out, I talked about that, a uh, bajillion, uh, last year, uh, it warms my heart that that is nominated. Uh, I didn't think it would be nominated, but I was the only one throwing it out there. It was so I'm by far the most nominated game for this category. Wow. And just throw yeah, it out I, there. You nominated three out of four of these. <laughs> <laughs> did I do three? You did three. Little Nightmares, I did Gears, Gears 5, five moving out. <laughs> Well, probably I probably did it value. I probably did another thing where it was like, okay, the valued pick is Gears Five because that's a sixty dollar game. Yeah. Little Nightmares is a discount game, but it's so good. And Moving Out, I just you know I love that game. I just love the gameplay of Moving Out. Um, so yeah, that, yeah, that sounds like me. <laughs> uh, how about L? What did what was your favorite games with gold? It is interesting how three of the four games are uh, trend a little more mature, and then you have Moving Out. It's very interesting. Um, for me, I voted for Resident Evil. Um, mostly because, to me, moving out was in Game Pass for so long. I actually wound up not completing it and buying it, and then it became Games with Gold. So you're welcome. Thank you. And Gears 5, I is, is like you said earlier, Corey, is, is a Game Pass game. That shouldn't be that exciting to be a games with gold. I really don't know anyone in the community that does not have game pass. Uh, little nightmares was fine. Yeah, at least one, maybe one person. Little nightmares is a good pick, but yeah, I went with resident evil, uh, based out off of, uh, that one surprised me the most good old Capcom. You don't see too many games from them as games with gold. So that was one where one that I nominated was actually in the final four. So one, Kenny, I don't know if you nominated any, but I don't think that your top games with gold made the list. For the, no, I I didn't nominate for this. Uh, I did, however, vote for Resident Evil. Once again, this was a more of a personal value pick for me. You know, I echo L's thoughts with Gears Five. It's in, it, it's in Game Pass. It's surprising that's in this list. Little Nightmares, I think, I already owned, and I don't have much interest in moving out. And Resident Evil, while I've not played it, I do have some interest in that series. So it's cool. To, it's one of those games where oftentimes you, when you hear us talking about games with gold, it's just like, oh, cool. There's a game I would never have bought or I have no intention of buying. Uh, thanks for giving it to me for free. It can sit in the backlog. 
And I that's one of the games that's like, hopefully one day I get to it. I mean, realistically, Games with Gold gives you, on on average, four games a month, right? So we're looking at 48 right. to you know 50 games a year. Uh, I'm looking at February where Gears 5 was introduced. That month had five games in it. Um so it's uh it's not like a insignificant number of games, but no. the quality may seem ex- insignificant. Uh, not on the list are some of my you know top picks if they were to appear, uh, and they are, of course are going to be Metroidvania's Dandara finally came out, and that was one I did not have, uh, and then uh, the the long awaited insanely twisted Shadow Planet, uh, both of which I've not played yet, but I uh, they were definitely welcomed in my. Uh, my backlog but for this category i think i have to go movie now it was just too good of a game even though i already had it completed both times uh when it was introduced with games with gold i think that somebody new who didn't get to play it on game pass i think that's the game that you know that's what you're going to recommend your friend to play but you guys voted and the best games with gold for 2021 is Moving out with a record-breaking 37.1% of the vote. Blew me away. I did not expect it. See, That's not I that think, surprising in my opinion. I mean, we talked about it for like two to three weeks straight, and it comes up like every four weeks, it seems like. Uh, yeah. Just a good game. I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like we're in the minority, though, in terms of liking it. I feel like we talk about it so much, people are like, stop talking about it. <laughs> that that uh, might be true. They yeah. voted. Yeah. That might be true. Uh, but moving out, good, good job on that category. Now, moving on is probably at least two of ours favorite category of the night. And that would be the ID at Xbox game of mm-hmm. the year. So these are games specifically in the ID at Xbox program. We used a TA list to uh, get that data and your top five, because this one had a tie for, I think it had a three or four way tie um, for second place. So the nominees are Project Winter, Game of the Year, guys, come on, uh, Hades, <laughs> <laughs> Death's Door, The Gunk, and The Forgotten City. So it, it didn't make it in there once, Vulgar. You, uh, you can think. Probably me for that. Him and all of his alternates vault voted for that. In itself, Uh, the nominees had no duplicates. I I can guarantee. Who's Lolger (laughs) Vatten? Exactly. (laughs) Um, So for this one, obviously, um, I was kind of looking back, and uh, my game of the year uh, it might be on this list, maybe not. But my at least my runner up. It turns out it wasn't an ID at Xbox game, so I'll save that for later. The The nominees that you guys picked are definitely good. I have played at least a bit of all of them, and I absolutely love two of them, uh, those being Death's Door and The Forgotten City. I'm really surprised that Forgotten City just doesn't get as much attention as... It, it is, even though in like the PC world it is, but like you guys really do need to check that game out. It is really I've cool. I've forgotten about it. Birds. naturally um i just started the gunk this past weekend i think that's going to be fun but it's going to be a short experience and i don't think there's going to be that much to it uh hades is obviously pretty well known and then mm. i don't even have to mention the cold one um <laughs> kenny <laughs> did you play any of these id at xbox games this year did i play any hades come on now is that the, is that the only mean, one uh yeah you're doing I yourself mean, a disservice just saying <laughs> I mean, obviously, I voted for Hades. If you if you've listened to this at any point, you know I voted for Hades on this one. That game was freaking phenomenal. I don't know what else I can say, or I don't know what else about this game I can say other than just just go play it. Like this truly is one of those games where if if they say that it's leaving Game Pass, I'm going to buy it. It'll probably be another one of those games where I'll always have it installed on my Xbox and just do a do a runner here here and there just for fun because it is that good. Very good, very good. L, uh, you played a lot of Hades. Any additional comments? Oh my there? gosh! Uh, yes, uh, my son and I have been uh, still playing Hades. Uh, we actually finally, 
at, uh, we actually had a talk in party the other day when we were doing our Thursday group. And we talked about, like, oh, should we finally turn on God mode? And that was also talked about on the Discord. We, yeah. I guess when you think of God mode, you think that it's going to be too easy and you don't want to do it. But we finally turned it on. Um, you start off with 20% uh, damage resistance, and every time you die, you get another 2% added. Um, but in Hades, dying is half the fun because you're like, oh, I get to see what story is next. And I really love... I don't know. We just love this game. It's um, so good. I do have news. We finally <laughs> got our first escape. So nice. Huzzah to us. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, that means you, so you made it. Over, means, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to spoil too much, but we, uh, I mean, that's the point is to escape. Um, and it was, of course, my son playing. He did it. Um, know. He prefers the boat. He prefers the bow and arrow. I was just going there. I don't know how you would do it without it because you got to stay ranged. Every time I pick any other weapon, we get destroyed really quickly. So we picked the uh, bow and arrow and the uh, one of the buffs gives you more arrows and stuff. Use the, the blood. Uh, one thing, another thing we, we taught Prue. Prue has the completion and he did not know this. It might be good to know especially since you guys don't like quick resume, especially on this game, that you can pause it at any time and exit the game and you will start uh, at the chamber you were in. So you can save and quit at any time. Yes. Did any of you know this? I did know that. You did know that? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Prue said he did not know that. I think it's a quick that. resume feature. It's not a quick resume feature. That's, that's just a feature of the game. You can actually right. quit the game. Right. That's what I'm saying. Because since you don't like quick resume, yeah. you, you can take advantage of You could quit at any time. Yeah, I, I didn't know that at first, uh, and so I would always just, I would play until I finished a run, even if that meant I was up half an hour mm-hmm. longer than I meant to be. Uh, and then I saw somewhere that you can just, you know, you can just turn it off and you were in from the, the room you were in, the start of the room you were in, so. Yep, I use that feature all the time where I'll, like, play at work or something like that and come home and finish it, or vice versa. Yeah, it's, it's just fantastic. One more thing I'll say about it. Is the voice acting is just amazing. No, so nothing, good. nothing is cringy. Nothing's like, oh, that's lame. It's just so good. And there's so many different characters and voices, and it's just yeah. And the music, and you forget this is an idea not, an Xbox game. I don't think I voted for this. I nominated this game. I'm like, oh, Super Giant. That's not. This is a, a real studio, right? It's just game's amazing. Mm-hmm. Real studios like, need help too. Yeah. Well, in this landmine of good games, what what do you think, Kush? Because this is like your bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah. So I have played three of these games. I know I need to play Forgotten City. Project Winter, I don't even think that's actually a game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hades, yeah, that's a great game. I was super bummed when, uh, when Supergiant... Uh, made this game it was only for pc for a while it was only for playstation for a while i was like we were never gonna get it uh so i i think i bought it on steam <laughs> and i never played it of course because that's what you do with steam and uh then it came to xbox and oh man oh man this is this is a meal this game is like a seven course meal uh it is not a game it is huge uh and l talked about it so much he, he hit all the points or you know most of the points so it's a great game uh it really you know i love it it's definitely in the top uh, five for me. Um, Death's Door. Uh, I can't. Uh, this game is amazing. <laughs> Death's Door. Awesome. Uh, maybe I'll talk about that later. Um, so it totally Ooh. deserves to be there. The Gunk. Uh, you know, didn't really know what to expect from it, but it was immediately reminded me of some of my favorite games in the genre. Um, you know, Ratchet and Clank. Uh, just exploration, action adventure. Just kind of love that, you know, third person running around doing stuff. I think this game is okay. I think it shows promise. And that's what excites me about the gunk. Um, so I think I voted <laughs> I think I voted for Hades, Death's Door, and the gunk. I probably, or I definitely nominated those. Um, Do you have any honorable mentions that did not make this top five? Oh, man, that'd be a great question to be prepared for. Um, I can tell you some <laughs> of the patrons, because these are the ones that did not make the cut, but were nominated. Let's do that. Clang 2. Um, Art of Rally, Total Accurate Battle Simulator, 
Um, oh, wait, look at this person. The gunk, a juggler, tell Hades, Death Door, Cyber Shadow, all from one person. No idea that who those can't could make be. Up their mind. <laughs> they can't make up their mind. That's <laughs> Doki Doki, Literature Club, Undertale. Stop uh, it. Omno, Mist. Oh, a lot of a lot of, lot of lot of well known games that we've talked about. Uh, even on the show in there, I, I will echo this person's A Juggler's Tale. Maybe not game of the year type stuff, but another really, really good uh, short Solid. little experience. Yeah. And then uh, another one I completely forgot about, um, probably because I haven't played it all the way. Uh, probably I don't even know if I'm halfway done, but uh, this very smart person wrote down Cyber Shadow. That game is just amazing. Yeah. No matter how hard it might be. Yeah. It, it's such a good game. I wish I had uh, nominated that. Um, it's like an NES throwback uh, to the Ninja Guide End games and you know, the Sunsoft Batman. Wow. Yeah, I, I need to play more of that, but there's just so much shiny out there. Um, I need an Xbox, man. That's, 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 for me, that's where it's at. That is uh, one, our big mistress. Yes, L. One thing, one thing that amused me uh, a little behind the scenes is that uh, you compiled these games with a pie uh, graph. And uh, the, I did, and well, the Google Hades w- did, and oh, and uh, the Hades one happens to be red, so that amuses me. And the, and the gunk is green, even though it's not yeah. green in the game. That's <laughs> just the color that you would imagine gunk being. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and Project Winter, Project whatever Winter's that is, blue. is blue. All and right, so annou- an- announce the surprise winner, please. Our surprise winner for X- ID at Xbox Game of the Year 2021 is. Hades, no surprise there. Robbery, absolutely no okay. surprise. I I think it's like what percent? Uh, forty seven point five percent of the votes. So almost half Dang. of you guys who voted voted for Hades. Now, like I don't know, I'm a little bit indifferent on Hades. I haven't played it enough, even though I know it's a good game. It came out in 2019, and uh, we just happened to get it in 21. I I don't know. It's it's kind of like a, a line there, but. Uh, definitely no qualms with that one winning because probably well deserved. You're gonna play it this year, though. I am. It's the year of the rogue. I am eleven days into the year, and I bet I've played a roguelite uh, in nine of those days, eight or nine. Uh, we'll see. And, and I'm currently hating the game I'm playing. I, I liked it. And now I'm hating it because I'm at that end game grind. Like it happened to be having to fill out like a, a Rolodex, which is like a bestiary. And it's a really stupid way to add to it. Uh, it's it's yeah, I, I don't like it. But what I do like are developers and publishers. And we put in a category uh, based off of the patron feedback for a dev slash publisher of the year. Uh, so this is anybody who made a game or published a game this past year. And the top four nominees from our patrons came out as Xbox Game Studios, Playground Games, which is, I guess that's different, uh, Devolver Digital, and Thunderful Games. Now, we didn't put any kind Say of what now? S- speculations like on you know how, how to pick or what to pick. Um, but I guess it's kind of, uh, self, uh, I don't know the words I'm trying to say, but it, they made, they had to make, you know, make things in 2021, I guess to kind of, that is what you should have considered. Um, Thunderful Games is the ones who make, they made the gunk, you know, mostly, I don't think they made anything new in 2021, but they do make the steam world games. I do, I do really like that, uh, that team there and Devolver Digital. Uh, I love Devolver Digital. Um, they made some, they made and published some really good stuff this year. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Like Playground Games is the Forza stuff, but like they're kind of rolled up into Xbox Game Studios, so they kind of like kind of dominating uh, a little bit, uh, especially with all of the uh, the big hitters this year. I think the Xbox Game Studios did a really, really good job of giving us games this year. Um, obviously with. Uh, Halo Infinite being like the the finale, and I think it was probably rightfully deserved. Uh, some really good stuff. Do um, you guys have any thoughts on a developer or publisher? I feel like Xbox Game Studios is kind of cheating a little bit, and I think I voted for them. I, I, I'm not sure if I did. I feel like that was a, a mistake because I, feel, I really do feel like Playground game, Games should have gotten my vote. 
So, so Xbox if I, Game if Studios I didn't would be the it. publisher in this equation. Yeah. Um, and Playground Games would be uh, a developer actually under Xbox Game Studios. Like, just kind of really thinking about that because Xbox Game Studios is so broad of a publisher because they're, they just encompass way too much at this point. But then again, I, I don't remember what exactly it is that I voted for on this one. I mean, just to throw it out there, some of the games that uh, the Xbox Game Studios team made this year uh, include... Oh my gosh, now this, this is, is what they developed. Halo. Uh, definitely Halo. Um, definitely like Psychonauts. Oh, you need to know. Uh, Age of Empires, that was uh, one this year. So that probably helped with your voting there. Mm, maybe that's why. Yep. Um, just looking here. Uh, they don't have any kind of good order. Uh, they, they have published uh, just 58 pages worth of games, um, at least on TA. So uh, definitely no stranger to uh, giving us games. So I don't know what else they made this year. We'll just go with that. Uh, anything that you want to add, uh, Kush or L? I'll watch you first. Mm, not really, honestly. I voted for Xbox out of those... Uh, I mean, you're guaranteed to get a few great games per year, and they're all going to Game Pass. So, right, that's that's going to win for me. Yeah, with with Game Pass just being so awesome, like I just kind of assumed uh, Xbox Game Studios was going to win. Um, I mean, that's where my, my I vote. I think I voted for all these, <laughs> or nominated. I think I nominated all these. I think I probably voted for Xbox. Um, Playground, you know, obviously, you know, they're solid. With uh, Forza, not a whole lot of stuff came out, but you know they didn't really miss, uh, especially once they fixed their mistakes. Devolver Digital, it's easy for me because I have a horrible memory. I can't think of a, a single bad game uh, from Devolver Digital uh, of recent memory. I just I can't think of anything. They make they really just, good stuff, you know, and I just scanned their list, do. and only they only made two. They only published two games last year. They did a lot in twenty twenty. Really, twenty twenty one, they had two games. Uh, well, they Seems do more a great that. job of picking and finding things to publish. Uh, they just they just do a great job of, of curating that stuff. So I always like what they put out. Thunderful Games, I thought this year, like once again, their presentation, I know I talked about it a couple times. The presentation has me thinking that 2022 is going to make Thunderful Games a whole lot higher than than what other people are thinking of them for this year. That's all I've got. Yeah, I'm looking at them as well. They had uh, the gunk this year. Um, they they only had like one thing 2020, uh, but they have three things right now on deck for 2022. And I, I know of two of them, and they look good. Um, not they don't look bad at all. And the other thing is a sequel. So obviously there is a, a following for that. But uh, in in our category here for Dev Publisher of the Year, probably no surprise. Short drum roll for a uh, expected answer. Xbox Game Studios with like sixty yeah. percent of the vote almost. So and Thunderful got so few votes uh, that I had to tabulate it because it wouldn't fit on the pie chart. They got three point two. Uh, in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, uh, little little old Thunderful Games. They'll see their rise next year. Maybe maybe I'm if we do this category again, we leave off maybe the big guys. <laughs> we'll see. See how the uh, 2022 plays out. All right. We are closing in on this award show, but not before we talk about studio for Xbox to buy. Now, I probably should have put like realistic in there because there's definitely yeah. some like <laughs> pipe dream stuff. And who put one, Nintendo? At least one thing that will not happen, cannot happen. Um, I don't know. Money talks. Maybe, maybe you could. I don't know. But there's uh, no way <laughs> the, the the top four that came back for this one. Uh, so these are studios that you would like Microsoft to buy, whether it was uh, real or or not. Uh, Square Enix, Capcom, Sega, and Insomniac. Uh, and the, the the insane people definitely went with Insomniac. So uh, I think I already know Kusha's. You're an insane person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well i did not actually vote for that i kept it realistic okay. but uh, i would have expected to see sucker punch up there as well if we're you know if we're just dreaming uh everything i picked i'm sure were smaller things like moon studios um um play dead uh you know because you know 
limbo likes baby um <laughs> nothing like a limbo like more like limbo um so yeah i went with the smaller guys because i was thinking hey let's just get a whole bunch for for what we would pay for for a bigger guy quantity well i was gonna say quantity over quality but i think yeah. i think those smaller games I'll say are both most of the time better quality indie quality exactly yeah do you have any thoughts on this one um l Oh man, what did I uh, nominate? I probably nominated. I don't Nintendo know. Probably, or something, or something. probably. I think I picked. I probably picked either Nintendo or uh, you know Red Leica. So <laughs> you definitely I picked mean, Nintendo. What's the? Um, I mean, what's the real number one reason to ha- want Xbox to acquire so they could show up in Game Pass Day One? So they well, and they yeah, could suck at the Sony. Sony. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> I voted for Square Enix. I think because. Nah, I want, you know, all the Final Fantasy games to be on Xbox, not they're always on the Switch and they're always on PlayStation. I want them on Xbox and I want them on Game Pass. Don't nah me, Kenny. I am mostly like for buying studios just so we don't miss out. Like there are so many games that are like we're coming to the Switch and like I'm like, are you kidding me? Who really wants to play that over there? And of course, it's like hundreds of thousands of people because everybody has a Switch. But why can't you just like save as Xbox? You know, save as dot Xbox file. Or games uh, like Genshin Impact, which are on the PC, PlayStation, mobile, Switch, not Xbox. It's everywhere else. Why is it in here too? I don't know. But what what studio would you like them to buy, Kenny? Crapcom? No. Uh, no. So personal choice, if I had to pick, it'd be Bandai Namco. That's the studio I would love for them to buy. And that's because they publish and develop a lot of the like anime games, like all the Digimons that I would love to have on Xbox. And then also, you know, if they're on Xbox, that means they're on Game Pass, which would be even better. So that would be my personal pick, but that didn't show up. In this list, I voted for Sega. I like I like Sega as I think it's just a good Game Pass. Um, what's the what's what, what's the word I'm looking for? Catalog edition. A- edition. It kind of help. Oh, it kind of helps round out what Game pa- what Game Pass really is. Where with Sega games, you get some of the more kiddier games, compliment like Sonic or something like that. Compliment, yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It'll help complement it. Because Sega's yeah. got you know a laundry list of games that they that's under their umbrella. I mean, that one's definitely under the realistic umbrella. But just yes, because of the, the the relationship that they have with Sega, uh, I'm looking at some of the Sega's brands right now, and you can just see some of these in like Game Pass all the time. You got Yakuza, you got Two Point Hospital, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog has been like. Various times, games with gold, uh, football manager, those in humankind, those are brand new uh, kind of Game Pass stuff. Um, yeah, I definitely think that one can happen. Even Hatsune Miku, which maybe we'll hear about that later uh, as well. Yeah, like I never would have, I would never pick Insomniac just because I know that's not going to happen. Obviously, since Should've PlayStation sailed. already owns them. This so I, one, did, I also did try to keep it, you know, more on the realistic side. This uh, particular category probably had the the most variety. So the, the nominees that got picked maybe had like two mentions. Um, but there were there were some other ones that got in there. Supergiant Games, Rocksteady Studios, uh, Crystal Dynamics. People are kind of saying, uh, you know, somewhat big, but somewhat small. Somebody said Team 17. Uh, they're, they're a publisher, but hey, you know, if uh, you want to count all their games, then uh, that's fine. Uh, Hazel Light Studios. I don't know what they made, but the name is so familiar. Hazel Light don't. is the, that French developer, so uh, way out. It takes two. Ah, right, ah. right. Game of the year type stuff. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Good stuff. All right. Well, uh, yeah, that's Dev uh, Studio for Xbox to buy, and uh, you guys selected Square Enix. You went with no Squeenix surprise for there. this one. 
42 uh, percent over Insomniac's 31 percent. So I think I think people like their Tomb Raider and their Final Fantasy. And oh yeah, I think those alone. That is uh, interesting. Square was a I, close I runner of, up for me. Like if you would have asked me, even like I don't know a, a year or two ago, I, I would have thought like Xbox owned Tomb Raider, but uh, I don't know why I associate it with Xbox so so much. But the yeah. Tomb Raider reboot was uh, pl- Xbox exclusive for a while, but just timed exclusive, right? Yes, and then Rise of the Tomb Raider. The DLC was also a timed exclusive, and I think the 20th year anniversary skin where it had features Lara Croft from like PS1, mm-hmm. um, that's a Xbox exclusive skin. Yeah, I'm just looking at uh, their, their list in TA. Now, they are a publisher and a developer, so if you're just looking at what they develop, um, yeah, you're looking at the Final Fantasies and the Kingdom Hearts. Those are like the big ones that stand uh, out. And, the reason I would love for that to be here. And uh, yeah, this would just be a phenomenal get, but I don't think, I don't see it happening. I, I don't even know if we're going to get Final Fantasy VII Remake at all. Does not seem, it's not going down yeah, a good path. Yeah, it's not looking good now. Well, but that was studio for Xbox to buy. All right, now on to the showcase category of the night, of the day, of the morning. It is the game of the year. Now, we are focused on just 2021 games. Um, This one, there there just can be so many nominees. Uh, You guys did come to a conclusion on a top four. Uh, I can't say that three three of them would even make my (laughs) list, but... Um, you guys picked, uh, and these names are going to be familiar, Halo Infinite, Forza Horizon 5, Hades, and Project Winter. <laughs> what the <heck>? Come on. <laughs> now, now Kuj, I do see one slice of the pie that's so small I don't see percentages. Uh, I'm not going to say which one that is, but you might have to do some, cal- some tabulating there. Um, I out of this bunch, uh, I, I definitely would pick Halo Infinite personally just for the time I've spent in it and the time that I know I will keep spending in it. I, I'm definitely not stopping it anytime soon. Uh, I did play all of these. Um, just none of them probably kept my attention for more than um, a couple hours, uh, unfortunately. Not that I'm done with them and won't go back to them or think that they're bad games. But Halo Infinite just offers so much, uh, at least to me. Um, if I want that single player experience, uh, I have that with the campaign and I have really enjoyed the campaign. Uh, but then the dailiness of coming in and, and doing my my challenges uh, for my Halo Infinite Battle Pass is just enough of a hook to get me in there and keep me there. So uh, for me, it's no choice. It is Halo Infinite out of this bunch. Still does not win my game of the year. Um, maybe, maybe if, maybe we'll save that for after we announce the winner, but for this one, Kenny, who would you pick out of this bunch? Uh, This one was pretty tough to vote for. I really struggled with Halo fours and Hades. The, you didn't play a lot of Halo that before this year, right? Like before like Christmas, really? Right. That's why I think Halo didn't win it for me because I just haven't played it quite enough to really s- say, oh yeah, this is the game of the year. Um, Forza, and it, it, I think it really just came down between Forza and Hades. And for me, I just had to give it to Hades. It's it's just freaking phenomenal. Just talk about it all the time. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and repeat what I said. What I've said multiple times on the show. Just yeah, Hades is just a phenomenal game, and it it almost felt wrong not to vote for it. What about you, L. Um, it pains me to admit this, Corey, but I have to agree with something that you said earlier. Mm. That I don't think Hades should count for 2021 game, since it really didn't come out in 2021. That's a fair point. Um, so I did not vote for it. 
even though I enjoyed it the most out of all these games. I believe I voted for Halo. I mean, I, yeah, like I said, I love Hades, but yeah, it came out in 2020 and it came out even earlier in like a beta fashion. Um, of course, we got it in 2021, but you could say that about anything, really, right? If any port comes over. So, yeah. you know, it's it's maybe splitting hairs, but I voted for Halo and uh, yeah. The it's biggest probably compliment, not a bad pick. The biggest compliment I can give Halo is is what you said earlier, Kenny, is that it got <laughs> Nate and Corey playing it, and they diss Halo all the time. So. <laughs> like, pre-Halo Infinite, go back, listen to a show at any point that Corey <laughs> or Nate is talking about Halo, and you hear them nodding off. They're ta- they're, they don't do Halo. My and the fact thing that, to do in that Halo. Nate said a good thing about it and the fact that Corey is playing it daily, that really does go to the show that Halo Infinite should be the game of the year. Because it is that good. My favorite thing to do in Halo is to diss on Halo. And I actually stopped doing that to play the game. So, yeah. <laughs> it helps that I'm pretty good at Halo. Oh, boy. You hear that, Death Dealers? Humble brag. Oh. <laughs> I, I actually think I could take her on. Oh, uh, oh my totally good at Halo. Goodness. Like, I am... I'm, I'm a beast. I'm just going to put that out there. Waka, I'll challenge you. <laughs> I can do that uh-huh. again. Learn <laughs> my lesson. Um, I need to Halo Infinite. Koosh, what is your canned version of uh, Game of the Year with these particular nominees? If you put me in a box and I had to pick from these, I would say I, I think I nominated Halo Infinite because I was thinking of other people before myself. I'm that kind of guy. I think I also nominated Forza Horizon 5 because I had fun with it. Hades, obviously. Uh, I disagree with you guys. I think that this is an Xbox-centered show, so we should be focused on when we get it on Xbox. So, therefore, I think it is a valid vote uh, for 2021. I know I threw uh, a nomination to it. Uh, Project Mentor, uh, meh. I don't think... Yeah, I don't. I, That's like saying yeah, miss this game of the year. I mean, come yeah. On. I mean, it's like it's like voting game for of the Mickey year, nineteen ninety three. It's like you, you I, I feel right in ballot for Mickey Mouse. That's, that's what Project Winter is to me. At this oh, point. Project Winter. Uh, I'm glad that they like it. I'm glad that they like it. But there's no way it's game of the year. Um, <laughs> yeah, my game of the year is not in the running here. So um, from what I see here. I mean, it's not me. It's not me voting, right? I'm voting for everybody else, and I, I guess I'd go Halo Infinite. Because Forza Horizon 5... That's a compliment. It, it was so buggy. It was so buggy. It bums me out that Halo Infinite isn't complete. So I hate to vote yes. for that. But I feel like that's probably the winner. But in terms of what I've played, Hades would be... I, you know, if I had to pick from these, Hades is the is the top. Because I, you know, I would go back and play that. But Halo Infinite, man, that's like right up there. And that surprises me to say that. Yeah, you know, none of these is mine, but uh, I, I, if you make me, I'm going to say Hades. Well, we did get one write in for Project Winter. It was from Chewy. Um, so I'll go ahead and read his comment. We have nothing to say about Project Winter. He <laughs> said, this is easily my game of the year, and I was so happy to get to play it thanks to Game Pass. Not only do I really enjoy the game itself from the social deception to the setting uh, of the art style, but it made for some of my favorite community experiences of the year it was great fun getting involved in just for fun and boosting sessions with the euros the game led to some very tense and also hilarious moments as we worked together to survive planted the seeds of suspicion deceived and murdered each other or more often than not simply froze starved or got eaten by a bear alone in the frozen wilderness so i can definitely see where experiences come into play and for in sure. order to get that with uh, Project Winner, you definitely had to to play it probably with friends. So uh, that the ways meant to be fair. played, I think, too. That that yeah. as well. That comes into play one hundred percent. Among Us would not win with us. No, no it wouldn't. <laughs> Although it is pretty funny to play with uh, with Saucy. Oh, um, that's about any game. <laughs> <laughs> True. But here we go. You guys voted, and your because it's not my game of the year. 2021 is 
Halo Infinite, of course. No surprise there. We had 35% of the vote for Halo Infinite, so just barely over Hades at 30%, and then uh, Forza Horizon at 28% of a Tell You Project winner, but they don't give me those low, low numbers. Uh, <laughs> well, I have done the math, sir. <laughs> oh, let me know. They got, they got uh, 6.7. Uh, well, you guys, you 6.7% mean a lot to us, and we're, we're glad that you uh, participated and voted for Project Winter. But yes, Halo Infinite uh, was your guys' game of the year. Um, let's get into ours, if it did not match this, and I'll go first. Well, actually, no, I'm going to go after Kush. Kush, you can go first. Um, let's talk about your game of the year, and if you have a, a an honorable mention, you know, that'll work too. So you're just straight to the jugular. Yes. You just oh, want my game of the year. You, you can, t- you can talk about it. You can talk about it. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, I don't know if I should do that or if I should like, you know, I, I, I narrowed it down to four. I feel really That's bad. Fine. My honorable mention, my Hold honorable on, mention because think. I didn't play it enough would be Psychonauts 2. Um, I did not give that game enough time this year. I, I played for like three achievements because of, you know, Game Pass quests and stuff. Um, I want to play that game more. I'm going to get to it in 2022. Let me tell you, it uh, will never leave Game Pass, so uh, you, you should just probably go ahead and do it. <laughs> I'll get to it by 2024 then. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> by 2024. Um, you know, the gunk didn't make my top because I, I think, but I think it's hopeful. I like what I'm seeing from that developer. A Juggler's Tale. It's, it's a good game, but it's not. It's not game of the year. Come on. But it is something I think everybody should check out, you know, at some point. Hades is my number two. So it's, it's quality. But for me, it's quality and quantity. And that's why it's number two. My number one, sir, surprising no one, is Death's Door. Of course. The game is amazing. I love it. Good I pick, loved good. every minute of it. Uh, I, I loved the fact that it was a stack. So when it was over, it was short but sweet. And when it was over, I could go back for seconds and do it again, and I could do it all in one run. So my first time through, it was just, you know, I got to enjoy the game. I got to explore and find secrets. This game, it's it's got so much to discover. Like, there's cool little puzzles everywhere. You talk to uh, a side character, and all of a sudden you've got this puzzle you have to go solve, which you get from a collectible. And if you don't flip the collectible over and look at it, you don't find the solution to the puzzle. In fact, you don't even know it's a puzzle. Um, that's how cool this game is for me because you can just get immersed in it, and it's not super complicated. I mean, you're running around. It's got a it's got a fun set of combat. It's rewarding. Um, it's difficult, and you can make it more difficult by trying to kill guys with an umbrella. Uh, that is <laughs> very cool. Um, this game, I, to me, like I said, it's short. It's sweet. And it's good from cover to cover. Um, this and it's ID at Xbox. This is why I game. Yeah, I like Halo. I'm surprising myself by saying that. It's fun to go and, and get a you know super kill streak. Um, that's awesome. Uh, it, it's fun. I saw Maka like reflect uh, you know a cannon shot back at the at the uh, you know the tank and it destroyed the tank. That's pretty cool. I gotta admit that's pretty cool. But Death's Door for me, cover to cover such a good game it's a short experience and everyone uh i wish everyone could enjoy it like i enjoy it and i, and I hope they give it a try well uh, i hope it comes we to cannot, game pass. Uh, <laughs> well we'll see it is devolver digital published uh so it has a better than zero percent chance at that but um l why don't you go ahead do you have a game of the year picked out or any uh runner-ups well, I'd say out of all of us, you know the answer since you got to read the uh, nominees and stuff like that. Um, so you, you wrote Lawn w- Simulator? Son Weird. of a... Oh, that I was spoilers. 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 Uh, but, you know, the games we talked about aside, I am going to surprise you guys and I'm going to go with Trigger Witch. So this game... Brought back uh, a ton of nostalgia. I had a great time playing local co-op with Michelle. We did our two-player thing, and both of us got achievements at the same time. And it's just, it plays like a twin, it's a twin-stick shooter, but it looks like Zelda. 
and there's, I don't know, it just hit all the right buttons for me. And the soundtrack was great, and the uh, developer is really cool. He's He did a lot of podcasts, and I actually listened to a couple of them on uh, how he made the game. And I don't know, Trigger Witch from East Asia Soft was my game of the year. Sometimes it's the little guys that deserve some credit. Um, echoing that, uh, recently Waka Pale messaged uh, the Discord saying he completed the game. He played it with his daughter. Nice. Up until a point where it got a little bit too hard for her, and then he finished it by himself. If you have a local person, it's it's better, mostly because it's easier. In which, um, when one of you dies, um, you know it's not game over. When both of you die, it you start the room over. But I assume in one player, once you die, you got to start the room over every time. Um, I have another story about it that I will tell in a couple minutes. But uh, trigger witch for me. Awesome. Uh, that That is a little bit of a surprise. I don't think anybody else would have that on their list. Definitely not. All right, Kenny, your turn. What was your game of the year, if not Halo Infinite or Hades? So my personal game of the year was not on this list. Um, one honorary mention, I'd like to throw out the name Splitgate by developer 1047 Games. Um. I don't know how many people in the community have played this. It's a free-to-play first-person shooter. Think Halo meets Portal. So the gameplay is very much reminiscent of Halo. Uh, It feels like a Halo game. It plays like a Halo game, and then you can shoot portals that let you jump around the map. You can see through the portals to shoot your enemies. It was just a lot of fun. It's a really good shooter. It had some bugs, but looking at TA, this is the only game that the developer has ever done, so growing pains. And to be fair, it's been a while since I have played it, so it's probably gotten better. But yeah, really good game. Like I said, it's free to play, so if you enjoy shooters, I would definitely give that one a, uh, a try. But for my actual game of the year just beating out Hades, I would have to give it to Age of Empires 4. Age of Empires is just an yeah. absolute beloved ga- uh, game series of mine. As far back as I can remember playing games, I've been playing Age of Empires. 4 was the sequel to 2, which 2 is the biggest game in the series, and 4 was just such a good sequel to it. The strategies and all the things that go into the game is good. The world looks beautiful. The art is great. I love what they did with the cutscenes where they went to the actual places and filmed them, then added like a CGI hologram kind of a thing, reenacting the battles. It's just, I, I, I don't really know how you can make the game better. It's just a phenomenal RTS if you enjoy these types of games. And I just absolutely cannot recommend this game high enough if you enjoy RTSs. And it's Game Pass for PC. And I saw a couple of things today that it's probably coming to console soon. So hopefully more people play this. Interesting. Well, that leaves me my runner up game of the year um it was definitely one in the very beginning of the year i was like this is going to be really hard to beat and unfortunately it like doesn't fit into any category it's not id at xbox uh not a lot of people have played it but i have sung its praises um it is k's or cause in the wild mass i knew it it is one of the best platformers to come out last year uh very reminiscent of uh 2d donkey kong and it controls so well, and oh, it's just such a good game. Uh, it is like a thirty dollar game, so I think that's what drops people away. But just a few weeks ago, it was on sale for like ten bucks. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely think about that if you like platformers at all. It 
provides just enough challenge. I think uh, it, it, tell, it makes you do everything and which I think is, is really good in this game. Uh, it's not super long in that aspect and there's a speed run, but the speed run is actually uh, really fun to do and it's completely doable. Um, once you play the game, once you just, you're ready to go, you know, those levels and you can probably go through the game with like 45 minutes to 30 minutes to spare it. Uh, it was really good from top to bottom. Uh, I wish I could play that one again. That is all to say that my game of the year is death Door. Just like Kush said, I cannot deny that game. Um, similar to Kush, once you play it, and you're just like, that is so good. I want to do it again. And you can. You can do it right on the Windows version. If you just play the game blind and you just do everything, uh, you're, you're going to be satisfied. And then you're like, oh, there's a, an achievement basically for hard mode where he, where he said the umbrella, uh, that, that's kind of the hard mode. And that in itself is very challenging, but doable and rewarding. Um and then you get to challenge yourself as you do that as your very first playthrough on your stack. And yeah, it, it is good from start to finish. Uh, I wish I could play it a third time and get achievements for it. Uh, it is that good. And there's an office reference. And so it just gets another point just for that. So yeah, Death Store, <laughs> every single one of you should play it. Um, I am it's so, so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I just, I could like, the K's is a really good game, but at, at the heart and soul, it's just a typical platformer. Uh, and you can feel really good about that. But this one, you feel really good after every single boss you beat. And uh, it's just so good. Death Store, man. You, no every surprise. single one of you should be playing that. But with that. When it comes to Game Pass. Uh, if it comes to Game Pass, that's fine. I, I'll, I'll see a humongous boost in that ratio because. Yeah, it actually surprises me. It's as low as it is. But uh, that will do it for the 2021 Chibis. Uh I'm going to throw it over back to you, Kenny. All right. That was yes, fun. Thank you, for, thank you, everyone, that helped participate in that. I'll see you again next year on that. But, uh, yeah, you throw it to me. Now I'm going to throw it back to L for this one. Uh, we're carrying on with the show. Let's get into some sales. We're not going to do a game showcase this week because this game, this would go way too long. So, uh, L, what are you going to recommend this week that people should buy? Uh, it's a game I haven't mentioned in quite a while. It is called Trigger Witch. It is uh, on sale this week. Of course. It is. It is yeah, uh, it's good. It's nine seventy four down from fourteen ninety nine. Um, I actually got a message from Kronos uh, saying he's going to pick it up, largely in part to my recommendation. So that's actually very rewarding to hear stuff like that. So yeah, if you uh, buy something on our recommendations, let us know and warm our warm our fuzzy little uh, black hearts. Um, I told him, you know, he should play it with uh, one of his daughters. If you know, and and there's nothing really bad in the game. There's some cartoon blood and that you could you could turn it off, and uh, it, it, it turns into pinata mode. So. There's no swearing. There's just, uh, you know, you know, just culty gun worship. That's all. Just nothing else is bad besides that one. <laughs> so uh, that's why. What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing. Uh, come on, Kronos, play it. I see you playing uh, Boyfriend Dungeon. Come on, man. No. Play a real Tr- game. <laughs> play a real game like this one, Trigger Witch. <laughs> Nate, did you, uh, I haven't said this in a while. Do you have any tabs open? Oh, do I? <laughs> uh, I'm looking at City of Brass. It's two dollars down from twenty. Ooh. It's a roguelite. This is apparently the mm. year of many things, Have but I one of which it. is the roguelite. Uh, it's also action adventure. It has zero completion, so you know it's very rare that I would recommend something and it turns out to be difficult. Of course, <laughs> two bucks. That's very I can't, remember the, can't remember the last time that happened in the past seven days. Um, so just be aware, but maybe, maybe you want to get into that because it is the year of the roguelike. Uh, second up, Jay and Silent Bob, man, I murdered that. Sorry. Jay and Silent Bob Mall Brawl, $6 down from 15. This is a beat em up. It only has 395 starters, but I think it is like, oh no, wait, I'm thinking of a different game. Uh, but I think it is completable. Three hey, completions. Ups. Only three completions? That's what I, I see. 
maybe it's hard. I don't know. But I, I love my tie-in games and, you know, Jay and Silent Bob, you know, maybe it's good. I'm hoping. Isn't that that um, game that you said to avoid Shrubble. the other week? Me? No, I didn't say to avoid it. The hardest achievement, one of oh. them, because many of them actually only have three people. I wonder if, like, it was broken and it just got recently patched. But anyways, one of them is called Accidental Panties, where you need to get hit in the face with a pair of panties. Uh... Well, suddenly Kenny is interested. I mean, yeah. there's... <laughs> it, does, it does seem very hard, though. Clear hard mode in one run without a game over? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, some people like brawlers uh, or beat-em-ups. I know I do. Um, so, you know, I'm probably going to pick it up, um, especially at this price. Um, next up, Submerged. I've talked about it before. I really enjoyed it. It's oh two hours down from 20. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great deal. Great. Uh, it's an adventure game. <laughs> um, you're doing a lot of sailing. You're doing a lot of climbing. Um, you're trying to solve little teeny tiny puzzles. It's about four to five hours with a walkthrough. There's a walkthrough on TA. I am pretty sure of that. Uh, but I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, much more than I thought it would, I would. And it's only $2. So check it out. And finally, Stella. I've mentioned it before. Uh, it's a Limbo-like. Uh, it's $7 down from 20 It's called a platformer, but really it's Limbo-like. We just have yet to add that genre. Has a 51% completion rate. I figured I should probably play this game uh, since I've recommended it three times now. And um, it definitely uh, scratches that limbo itch. Um, it, it's a little bit unique in that uh, when you go to push a box, because that's you know, a, lot of, a lot of times you're pushing boxes, um, instead of having to like run into it, jump over it, get to the other side, push it, no, you kind of run in front of it naturally. And then if you want to move it, you just kind of hold X while you're running by it. You grab it and you kind of slide it with you. It makes a huge difference in these types of games because uh, you can really uh, be mobile and you're not just like bumping up against stuff to push it. Uh, so far, I you know I popped two achievements and I'm really liking this game. Uh, I unfortunately too many shiny things all at one time. I will probably skip off this and come back to it when I'm when I'm really looking forward to it. But still, seven dollars and twenty. Check it out. Uh, real right. quick, I got I got excited when I looked at uh, Jane Silent Bob, the developers. One of the developers is kind of an inside joke. It's called Spoony Bard Productions. The only one with a chance of knowing what that is is Nate. But if not, Colonel will Spoony know. Spoony Bard. It's not coming to mind. It is a Final Fantasy IV thing. Um, <laughs> Edward the Bard is yelled at. You Spoony Bard. It's one of those horrible translation things that was left in, and it is now a... Uh, Huh. Just a cult, a cult thing. Yeah. Uh, imagine they naming also, your gaming studio that. Yeah, right. It's pretty great, and they did one other game called Alfonso's Arctic Adventure. I feel like I've looked at that one, but <laughs> I that, can't recall that's it. That's a one to two hour completion. So yeah, a little bit easier than Jane Silent Bob. All right. Well, continuing on, we got some games that are coming real soon. Uh, you're up first, Corey. We are back. Coming real soon is full of games. And uh, just to There's mention... There's an actual list here. We're not going to actually go into it, uh, apparently. But Nobody Saves the World comes out on Tuesday. That's in Game Pass. Uh, Drinkbox. Tuesday 18th. Yep, Drinkbox Studios. Uh, Thursday, January 20th is uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Extraction, which is also in Game Pass. And then uh, Paparazzi, also in Game Pass. But that's not what we're here to tell you about. We're here to tell you about two other games, very Japanese games, and dang it, they got me. Kimco. I'm talking about a Kimco game. Got it. And it's called RP Golf Legends. RP Golf <laughs> Legends. Um, this is a an RPG game, but it includes golf. So it looks kind of like a, a take on like golf story, which I bought and enjoyed on the Nintendo Switch. Um, yeah. So, like, a good game. I see. I see that you're fighting monsters, and there are 54 holes of actual golf that you do, and that you know what? That's enough for for me to really dive into my first Kimco game. I think. So, I'm kind of looking forward to uh, to this game. Believe it or not, there says there's dungeons. You can fish. This crafting. I don't really care about crafting, but uh, you fight your formidable fo foes using golf clubs how unique that sounds pretty, so, pretty great 
Yep, I was. I'm just as shocked and uh, out of words as you were. <laughs> but what what did you find, Nate? You found another shocking game. I did. I think I actually stole it from you, but I'm not sure. Yeah, that was my uh, first pick, but that's okay. Yes. Okay. This is Hatsune Miku Logic Paint S. Uh, you know, very the, Americanized. The very popular name. name. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so this is from the Hatsune Miku series, Miku series, sorry, which I knew nothing about until today when I looked it up. That's apparently a singing game. So kind of like a, uh, you know, uh, I don't know any singing games. I'm sorry. It's kind of like a singing <laughs> game, which is very popular on Nintendo. However, this totally diverges from that, which is why I'm interested in it. This is, to my knowledge, the very first Picross game. On Xbox. Mm-hmm. Now, what is Picross? I don't know. Picross is basically a, a puzzle game where you uh, have a square of varying sizes, uh, you know, depending on how complex it is. And you're given numbers uh, that tell you where uh, basically uh, a color goes or a, a square goes on this grid. And when you do that, you get a like an 8-bit image. Um, and that's a very fun game. And you know, I remember playing it on the DS and such. Uh, but we never, to my knowledge, like I said, have had that ability to get achievements playing a game like that on Xbox, but now we do. Uh, what's interesting is that Palgi actually has a couple Picross, or Picross, I'm sorry, Picross games in their, uh, library that they said that they are looking to port in the future. So we may get more of these. So if you like this, if this looks interesting, maybe hit them up and, and let them know. Uh, there's going to be 350 puzzles included. They have 5x5, five 15x5, five, 15, by five, 15 and 20x20 20 20 puzzles. Uh, and they've also added them from a you know some smartphone app. I don't know. If people are into that, maybe that's good for you. Um, as you complete the stages, you're going to get illustrations of these people. They're going to comment and cheer you on as you play, if you pick them. Uh, what are you going to be doing? You're going to be earning stars by completing these puzzles. And doing that, uh, going back to the whole music angle, you can unlock different songs that can be played from menu and also in the puzzles while you're doing it. I don't care about that. I get to do Picross. I love these types of puzzles. This is one of those types of games that you, you just play a little bit before bed or while you're doing something else. It's a great little thing that you can just chip away at uh, as time goes on. I'm very excited for this. I will... <laughs> I will maybe buy this at full price. So well, lucky for and, you, it's on sale. <laughs> what? It's an introductory self of like uh, almost three bucks off, but it's unclear by the achievements how many puzzles you have to do. But there is a fair chance you have to do a lot of those three hundred fifty, which is perfectly fine with me. Yeah, I can't imagine a super exciting achievement list. But the fact that I get to do, you know, pick Ross and get achievements uh, is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. And it says uh, it's on Xbox and Windows. So, uh, you know, this is this is one I would probably like to play with a mouse, but it's fine mm-hmm. with the controller, too. I've looked at Picross like there's a bunch of Picross on uh, the Nintendo Switch and it like almost never goes on sale. Um, but I've almost bought it there multiple times. So I, I'm very happy along with you to uh, to get this. Uh, actually, so, yeah. Nate, I, I have come across Picross on the Xbox before. Mm-hmm. And it in was, a game or it, it, the entire it game? was in it was one of the mini games in uh, one of the Artifacts games. I couldn't tell yes, you which see, one. Um, I can see it being a mini game, but not an entire. Yes. So we were all collectively like, oh, cool, because it's different from the usual. Yeah, Michelle's good at those. I am not so good. But yeah, it was a Game Boy staple back in the day. So yeah, Nintendo's got that market cornered, and you get fun Mario designs. Hopefully, we get some fun uh, Hatsune designs, <laughs> anime girl designs. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I mean we're not in it sure. for the pictures. <laughs> oh, we're not. As I mean, unless there's fan service. We're oh. for the pictures, but not the not the art around the pictures. Like she's holding a fan. Does that count? Kenny. Uh no. Can you use that fan service? That's not that's not the right kind of fan service. You're the expert. Somehow Yu-Gi-Oh? I have been deemed the uh, expert of this. Did you just say Yu-Gi-Oh? No. <laughs> it's definitely not fan service. I'm just naming right. random Japanese things that nobody cares about, Kenny. Yeah, nobody. <laughs> like Final Fantasy. 
All right, continuing to contest, who are the losers this week, Corey? This week on the individual side, we lost NBA Kirkland, Alex R D, Mental Knight Five. On the team side, we have a I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm not up with my G Task lore on the team side, but we lost a lot of teams. Facial Lafleur, Quick Don't Die, Skeptical Mario, Ace, Big L, Matriarch, Death Dealers, your whole team. Uh oh. Um. Fluttery Chicken, you can tell us a story here in a minute. Lego Head 1977. <laughs> of course he is. So. Kitty Skies, NBA Kirkland, Hawkeye Barry 20, and Alex RD, you are gone from G-Task, and we salute you. All right, uh, what happened this week? Um, you, you didn't care? You give up? I'm going to say two out of the three of us did what they were supposed to do, and one of us didn't. I will let you guess who didn't. <laughs> Sounds uh, like a typical Thursday night. Huh. <laughs> death dealers. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that deal, death dealers. I tell you. Things. Yeah. So uh, rip to the librarian, the truck driver, and the grammar policeman. We did go out using all of our bonuses. So that's good. We didn't uh, go out having not used them, which is always a, a problem. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, it's interesting. How many teams started? Like over a thousand, right? At least 69. Yeah. I was going to say at least 13, 14, 13 teams. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So it looks like we were the 150th. Yeah. That math was way off, I think, but, uh, all right. 700, 793 teams started. So yeah. Well, like I said, at least that, 69. We did fine. If you're yeah, not first, I, got no, you're last. I have no real stories. I think this year, the people that are are trying to win are going to be in at the end, and everyone else just is kind of going out when they go out. What are the bonuses for this week? That is a good question. Definitely not going to stall. The solo bonus is called the Power of Three, worth 500 TA, and the period having unlocked an achievement with either the word three or the number three in it. Ah, oh, just play an ACA game. Everyone loves those. And uh, team bonus is Screaming Terror with 1,500 TA and the period with each member having unlocked at least 20 achievements from the action horror or survival horror genres. That would be really good for Corey. He loves those games. Mm, not that year. <laughs> Next up is the Gamer Tag Challenge. Nate? Yes, it's the Gamer Tag Challenge. This is January, and our Gamer Tag is Jimbot UK. A lot of people are very interested in the Gamertag Challenge all of a sudden. It probably has to do with the AHL. If you want to get in on the Gamertag Challenge, go ahead and go to the uh, GTC channel. You may have to opt in first. Uh, and then uh, send a PM to me with your Google uh, email address or whatever email address is tied to your Google Docs account. Because that's how you're going to reflect your score. You're going to update a, a spreadsheet there. If you have any questions, you go to the channel. You can ask them there. Uh, just general questions or questions about the challenges. Let's talk about Jimbot UK. He is our gamer tag. Uh, he's our patron who we have picked his gamer tag, and he has picked for his wild card game any new achievement or previous completion in a Pac Man or Trials game. Previously, I forgot the uh, previous completion portion of that, uh, and that is important. That is worth one bonus draw max. Uh, and since we haven't talked about it in a while, that will also replace a single letter. In the gamer tag, if you, for whatever reason, can't complete it, you don't have a game with that, you just don't have enough ease, whatever, uh, it can complete one letter. If you just find yourself short, it can fill that in. That's why it's a wild card. Uh, if you happen to spell the gamer tag uh, and you get the wild card, you get one extra draw, so good on you. And our bonus is and action. Achievements in the action genre. And we're talking about strictly the action genre, not action adventure. It has to have the action genre tag. One bonus draw per achievement, limit one per game. Once again, if you have any questions, go to the Gamertag channel and we can answer them there with no sass. Maybe a little <laughs> sass. A lot sass of sass. optional. All right, and that takes us to the final part. Brad Camp. Take it away, Corey. Remember when we used to call it Proclamation Point? Man, 
Proclamation boy. And L had a had a microphone with a reverb. Yeah, good memories. Uh, for completions, we have Kete at one hundred and fifty completions. Uh, not in, in this past week, but in her whole life. Uh, <laughs> I don't know wow. where I'm going with that. Uh, Whoa, it sounds worse. So much than, shade. <laughs> it sounds worse Jeez. than what I meant. It's a congratulations. Job, what are you Off- saying? Officer Why are you Zero attacking for no reason. Officer Zero passed 750 completions uh, this past week, and Magic Monkey passed 1,150 completed games. In ratio, no shade here, Death Dealers with a ratio of 1.7, and KT Echo with a ratio of 2.2. KT Echo, definitely a dude. In streaks, AS Unknown 1 is currently on a 150-day achievement win streak. Ace has 250, as does Chesno. Ben L72 with 300 days. Jeremy DJ, I don't believe I've said your name before, 850 days. Sniped by a girl 1, 3,000 days. Blue Thunder, 7398, 3150, and Biggle with 3300. In score, Logic Slayer has hit 350,000 gamer score. El Sock, 450,000 gamer score. Matrark, 800,000. Isret, 102, 900,000. Magic Monkey, 1.1 million. Mental Knight 5, 1.7 million. And Redemption Denied. Has hit the big three million gamer score. Woohoo! It's insane. All right, in leaderboards, it's going to be a little bit longer this week because it uh, took the 2021 leaderboard information. So I selected uh, some stuff that was at least in the top 10. So here we go. Alex R. Davies finished number one. That is number one in the 2021 Xbox TA Difference Leaderboard for Metroidvania games. That is pretty amazing. He had a crazy year. Um, and Skeptical Mario was number two in that same leaderboard. So we had some... Uh, some craziness in our our Discord peoples. Uh, Cerebral Assassin was number one in the North Carolina TA Difference Leaderboard for Adventure. Dan Pacific's number one in the TA Difference Leaderboard for Cycling Games. Can you name any cycling games, Kenny? Uh, bicycle Simulator. Energy Cycle. That is correct, and that is also correct. Enigma Gamer 77 is in position 8 in the 2021 Canadia Gamer Score leaderboard for strategy games. High Road V2 is number 2 in the whole of the USA leaderboard for sports games. See, that's how you do it, Hatton. You had a bunch, you had all different little sports mentioned. This guy is just sports. All of them. Ice Fire is number 4 in the uh, TA difference for platformer. Inferno, number one. Number one in the entire Xbox TA difference leaderboard. We have some heavy hitters in our community. Uh, Jables, number six in Nova Scotia, gamer score. Um, Lucas, not in 2021, but overall is now second in the completed games leaderboard of all time for Xbox Live Arcade. That is crazy. Magical Mars is number one. 2021 Mexico completions for dance games. So many. Prince it, number two. 2021 Brazil. TA Difference Leaderboard for party games. Sincere Seeker 6, number one. USA Achievements 1 Leaderboard for Windows action games. Slayer Raining, number one. Iowa, Gamer Score. Vulgar, Latin. I know that guy. He's number one on the Nebraska Achievements 1 Leaderboard. That just happened. He's very proud of it. Waka Pale, number one. Completions. Battle Royale. And our good friend Magic Monkey, who is going to have to just tell us how to pronounce his name. It's got to be, but that, that capital K is throwing me off. It might be like Kai from Dragon Ball Z. Magic Monkey. Position number one, Xbox completions for racing games. And 
our good friend Neo, who you mentioned earlier, is in position numero uno for 2021 California. Gamer score leaderboard for Stealth. And number three for USA Completions for Vayners. So he knows a thing or two about Vayners and his monthly Vayner of the Month. Monthly Vayner of the Month, that sounds good. Should be a thing to watch. And in Bragg's, Freaky Row completed Super Bomberman R, or I guess his more uh, appropriately his nephew did. Do you know anything about that one, Nate? Uh, Super Bomberman? Is that what you're talking about? It's got like, I don't know, I think he's like 40 to complete it, and it's some ridiculous <laughs> TA. Yeah, I do know something about that. I believe that there's some scripts running around uh, that yeah. their nephews can help them. Yeah, nephews. Nephews are good. Ben L72 completed Hexic HD, as they would say. Ahizo completed Rayman Legends 360. So that's his second stack of that one. Corey, what happened here? Wakapel completed Infinite Beyond the Mind. And uh, I don't I don't know what happened there. He was the uh, second he in the world. To it before I bought it. <laughs> in fact, I just said, no, I'm good. I didn't buy it. You lit a fire <laughs> under him just for uh <laughs> just That's pretty good out. though. Uh-huh. That's pretty good. That was not an easy game. It was funny because he was like, This is gonna be really, really hard. Like, oh, it's gonna be almost impossible. And then he completes it out of nowhere. Four hours later. <laughs> yeah. He said, oh, oh yeah, so there was a one-hour speed run, and then he did it in an hour 23. He said, I don't know how I'm going to shave 23 minutes off. And then the next thing he posted was 59 minutes and 59 seconds, and he said the achievement did not pop. So I don't know what happened. He must have done it again. But he's got And there's an achievement now. for co-op. How did he do the co-op? I don't know. He has a thing he, he said- recorded. He did. Oh, that's good. We should we should listen to that. I believe he said though that co-op difficulty is way lower. Is it? You can actually do it with two controllers, but the platforming just becomes annoying. Okay. He probably used his teeth or something. That man's got skills. And he is atop the completed games leaderboard for Battle Royale. No surprise there. He is a crazy person. Uh, before we go off the air, I have a quick, hopefully, quick story to tell you. Uh, One of the things I love about the community the most is impromptu boosts. And this one was actually started by a suggestion from X the Hero in Jackbox Party Pack 8. Get this. There's an achievement where you need 1,000 people in the audience. 1,000. So, of course, you don't really need 1,000 people. You just need 1,000 browsers open. So the idea was, all right. Get a bunch of people together and they open as many browsers as you can. So, luckily, someone wrote a script in how uh, you could just have the script open browsers for you. So, uh, before before we played only uh, like 24 people had the achievement. And now... 31 people have the achievement. Cheaters. That is because X the Hero, Ahizo, Mental Knight, uh, myself, uh, a surprise visit from Chin Doctor, a What the Fug, and Iron Fist of Snuff all obtained the achievement that evening. And this was just on a whim from X the Hero, so I love it. Uh, KT Echo jumped in our party while he was boosting Saints Row 2 with somebody else. And he tried to teach me how to computer as as the <laughs> it did not literally go impossible. Well. We've been doing it this for not, 181 it, episodes. It did, not, it did not go well. And uh it was great. So then after that, or while this was going on, uh Jables, Prue, and MDP and Michelle wandered in the party and we got impromptu Rocket League going. So we went now from that's boosting a much better game. to Rocket League. So I just, I don't know. All this stuff could not be made possible without the community and the Discord. So I love stories like this that just bring us all together. Mm-hmm. So thank you to KT Echo, uh, even people <clears throat> like Crunchy Goblin who were not running a script. And he said, I opened 10 uh, tabs for you guys. 
out of the thousand, like, thanks, bud. <laughs> but uh, it was a good time. So yeah, Chin, Doctor, out of nowhere, pl- you played Rocket League with us. We we did some uh, fun six player Rocket League. Nice. Rocket League's been, always good. Uh, it had been several months since I played. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's been a long time for me too. Better than usual. I played Rocket uh, League Swipe, and I cannot be defeated. I'm just gonna throw that out there. He's played I one time. On I played five times. I played five times, and no. Oh, oh yeah. So we got the ratio from nine point six seven down to eight point five seven. I have the game. You should open some tabs for me. If anyone needs help, except for Corey, let us know, and we'll get that done. Just message uh, KT Echo and, of course, uh, Prue. <laughs> Next to Hero, he's uh, obligated now, right, to help in Jump in Party? That's what oh, it sounds yeah. like. Jump in Party. Yeah, he was all like, oh, I had too much scotch now. I got to go, guys. I'm sorry. I can't help anymore. Yeah, you know. See, you I'm know not sure goes. if you're joking or not, because I could totally believe that. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> he got the achievement first, and then, uh, yeah. So much for a little while. Oh yeah, absolutely. Not really. They're up to Jack Bucks eight. That's crazy. I know. I can't believe they ended after the first. Or they kept going after the first. All right. Well, that will do it for us. If you want to get in on these boosts and join the community and just make a lot of good friends and whatnot, be a part of all this nonsense. Discord.io slash age one hundred one is our link. Come join. The link's down in the, in the description of this podcast, wherever it is that you are that you are listening to this or watching it on YouTube if you take in podcasts that way for some reason. Speaking of YouTube, youtube.com slash achievementhunting101. If you're not already, please go sub to us over there. We greatly appreciate it. Somewhere else, twitch.tv slash h101. Follow. And if you've got Amazon Prime, you give us a free sub. I... What a what a, what did I say last week about the last dab and getting to you a thousand followers? You were going to do followers? it every live show this year. I did not say that. Uh, this is not a live show. I think I, I said something like, "If we get to a thousand subscribers on You'll YouTube, you snort it, and or Twitch." I think I would do it, like drink a bottle of it or something stupid. I don't know. I got to review the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> sure. We'll make that. We'll make that the goal. If we get to a thousand followers on Twitch and or a thousand subscribers on YouTube, I will eat it off the mouse pad. Right, you guys uh, with your mm, computer scripts, a thousand tabs, you know what to do. I don't care. But last but not least, Patreon. If you are able to support the show, we greatly appreciate patreon.com slash achievement hunting one one. You'll get some goodies over there some behind the scenes stuff and something new like rockers rambles yes thank you to all of our patrons we greatly appreciate you all but with that class is dismissed see you all next week goodbye Hello, AH101. This is the first time you are hearing my voice, because this is the first time I've been on the internet. This is Neo21, and I am bringing you a challenge that I came up with. Well, not exactly I came up with, but was inspired by uh, last year's Year of the Assassin, put on by our Chewy, which, humble brag, I won. <laughs> that just was coincidental. I was planning on playing all the Assassin's Creed last year anyways, so that just... Uh, Pan out very well to have a challenge based on it. Anyways, I have been a longtime fan of the Metroidvania genre, going back to the days of Super Nintendo. Although I never actually played the Super Metroid on SNES, I played it on the emulator much later. Anyways, I am a big fan of the genre, and um, over the last couple years, thanks to you guys, I've gotten really inspired to climb up those leaderboards and I've made it into the top 50. That was my one of my goals for last year was making it into the top 50. I think I made it up to 42 was my highest at one point. And I think I started last year somewhere around 300. 
uh, and before that, uh, the year before that, I don't even know where I was, but um, since you guys have so inspired me to climb those leaderboards, eventually I want to make it to number one at some point. Don't know if that's going to be this year, doubt it, but uh, you know, sometime in the future. So our newly crowned king of the hill, Skeptical Mario, has recently acquired that coveted top spot on the Metroidvania genre leaderboard as he overtook a woo or a woo i hear you guys pronounce it different ways so i've always said a woo but uh, you'll have to correct me if it is a woo because i think that's usually how rocket dude says it uh anyways um where is i going with all that ah uh, yes so you guys inspired me to climb up the leaderboards and over the last year or so i have been buying up practically every vayner that has gone on sale so I have almost all of them now, and I was I'm planning to play, not play through all of them this year, but play through a good chunk of them. And so I decided, again, inspired by Year of the Assassin, to put on an event of my own for Year of the Vayner. So as uh, quite a few of you have responded, we've gotten 42 responses on my post in Discord. And I've had a few people who are not on Discord who have messaged me uh, privately on TA, so... We are at about 50 participants, which is way bit better than I was expecting. So, anyways, I am bringing you Year of the Vayner. And what is that? Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Vayner is our uh, abbreviation for Metroidvania. And so I am going to be tracking all sorts of different stats uh, in game any and any. Uh, all games with a Metroidvania genre tag on True Achievements. So I'll be tracking things like True Achievement Score, Gamer Score, Achievements 1, Completions, Leaderboard Positions, all sorts of stuff. But the key st stat that's going to be the key winner is True Achievement Score Earned this year, which Mental Knight has so graciously offered a, uh, up a $20 reward for whoever takes that top spot for most TA in the genre one this year but yesterday i had another thought to add in another little fun twist uh, both inspired by year of the assassin from last year and better completions matter with the random game that you are assigned every month and i thought hey let me uh list all of the games in the genre and each month one of those games will randomly get drawn and um before I get to that, though, I said, hey, let's do a raffle. So every completion of a uh, Vayner game done this year, you will earn one entry into the raffle. And if you complete the Vayner of the Month, which I was just talking about a second ago, you'll get three entries to the raffle. And then uh, Eliphalet asked a very good question of, hey, you know, for those of us have, who have already completed that uh, whatever the game is that month if they've previously completed it can they get credit and so i decided it's a good compromise instead of getting three you'll just get two but you will get uh you know credit for having already completed it so um my spreadsheet is live so we're on the 2022 tab you can see all your starting stats and then each month i will um add in your new uh, TA and gamer score and TAD and all that stuff, and it'll compare and show us how much everybody has earned over the last month. And so I'll be bringing you these short little segments covering all the highlights of each month. So if you have any questions, I'm pretty active on Discord. You can DM me there or tag me, or you can uh, private message me on True Achievements. So looking forward to seeing all of your stat gains in the genre this year. Oh, yes. Well, uh, one other thing I wanted to highlight uh, before I sign off here is a couple of interesting stats just off the start here. As you can probably assume, um, the top person with almost all of the categories, uh, leading all the categories, is a woo. Um, it you know, probably would be Skeptical Mario, but he decided not to take place in this event. So for those of us who are trying to catch up to him, this year might be a great chance to get closer to that coveted top spot. But uh, Awu is in second place, and he has a commanding lead in most of the categories, but just wanted to point out a couple of stats that he does not currently 
have the the monopoly on. So he has the most TA, gamer score, TAD, achievements, completions, and leaderboard position. <clears throat> but a couple of leading stats he does not have is the highest ratio currently goes to Fista Roboto with a 3.22. And the highest completion going into this year is Casual Exile with 100% completion. All 31 games in the genre that he has played, he has completed 100%. That is impressive. And then lastly, most games played goes to Rocker Dude with 92. I think he's in second or third on that leaderboard. Uh, so he's almost at the top there. So that is it for this month. I'll be bringing you these major stat gains each month and uh, calling out some fun stats. So have fun, everybody. I'll talk to you next month. Oh, and one last thing, uh, kind of important. The randomly drawn Vayner of the Month for January is Mystic Bell. So go out there and get that completion and earn yourself three entries to the raffle. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the segment that still doesn't know what Sandbox is. It is, generally speaking, a segment in which we break down some of the oft-overlooked genres out there as tracked by TA and discuss at perhaps greater lengths than is merited all things that have to do with said genre. I am Elroy OMJ, and I am happier than a bird with a french fry to have my co-host in this journey ready for our fifth edition. She is the Amazing M. Oh, How's it? That was an awesome introduction, as always, Elroy. Oh, thank you, thank you. How are you doing? Uh, you know, I'm hanging in there. Uh, I don't want to belabor everyone with all my health ailments, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm going under the knife again. But that's uh, it's all good. Oh, so look, you uh, you've got this, though. You know, you're yeah, you're gonna heal just fine, and everything's gonna. You know, you're gonna be <laughs> out there extolling why sandbox games are defined completely wrongly on TA. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'll have a little extra time on the couch to look these things up now. So. Oh, there you can put in even more genre definite <laughs> genre changes. So you know, yeah. this might be uh, the the high point in in our work here. Right, but unfortunately, my uh, my bogo expired on my back surgery. So you know, there's still <laughs> yeah. Apparently, that was only a six month. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, so well, thanks for uh, getting together with me for this of one. Of course. Uh, so. Uh, I think that this was my this was your choice. Yes, so why don't you give it to us? What what is this wonderful genre for tonight? So in anticipation of this week's choice, I did give you a clue, or should they say this episode's choice? Because we've never been a weekly segment. Um, mm -hmm. I did give a clue at the end of the last one that was just that uh, the name of the genre had been dropped on the previous week's episode of the podcast. As I just said, we don't record weekly. It's been a little bit. Uh, this is at the end of level 161. So I don't expect oh, anyone to remember. But at the end of 161, for some random reason, Elle mentioned the on rails genre. So hmm. I figured that's probably right about in our wheelhouse in terms of the right <laughs> size, the right number of games involved. And uh, Elroy, you're always game for trying to figure these things out. Absolutely. So that was, maybe he's playing as like a fiddle and just, uh, you know, planted that idea out there because he just has such strong feelings about the on rail genre. Maybe so. He doesn't realize the power he has. I know. But <laughs> let's really dive into the on rail genre. I know, Elroy, as always, you've prepared a statistical deep dive into the genre. But uh, let's yes. talk first about what it's defined as being. And I think mm -hmm. we're going to have less issues with this than our previous episode. The on rail genre is defined on TA as games that give the player limited control of their avatar, usually around the immediate screen. The player does not control the path their avatar takes as they are, as though they are tied to a rail. Fantastic. So uh, that's uh, important uh, delineation is that it's just limited control. It just does not mean that the controls are crap. So it's just uh, limited <laughs> control. So uh, it's it's limited in the sense of uh, how it's supposed to be in the game, not limited in the sense that you you're like pushing this button right. and it's not going where you're supposed to go. So there you go. Right. It's not all these controller uh, inputs and you can only <laughs> use the A button. But we're going to do our discussion deep dive in a minute. So what do you find out about the statistics for the on rail genre? All right. Well, let's see here. We have. Uh, 
41 whole games in the on the rails genre and 32 of them are still listed so uh, th there's that if you wanted to make a, a run at it uh, it has 33,645 gamer score worth 87,030 TA uh, that is encompassing 1,110 achievements and the ratio is uh, moderate 2.58 we've had some higher some lower than that so it's kind of right in the middle uh, the highest ratio Chivo is actually one from Child of Eden, which is called Master of Eden. So we might uh, get back to that one, that game here in a bit. Uh, this one's much better than the, uh, I believe it was the sandbox genre that had all the un uh, unobtainables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one's only got four. So there you go. I believe they might have been in that same game game maybe not i can't remember Child now it's been... oh you mean they're all in the same game as each other yeah, yeah i don't i don't think it was it child of eden i can't no remember. it's not well... going to be child of eden that one's completable okay. all right well there's one game and i think all four of them were in that one game but it's been a, a hot minute since i looked at it so uh i'm old i forget stuff so uh gamer score leaders although in gamer score you, uh, finally we have someone maybe that i've heard of nothing against uh <laughs> whatever was it like pimp daddy x or whatever it was from previous weeks and yeah that, finally we have someone that sounds familiar uh it is and i was going to give this guy crap about not being the number one uh uh, gamer score leader in this in the great state of Tennessee and beat em ups, but unfortunately he has since uh, passed me again. Oh no! Uh, so yeah, I I was I was not scoring anything uh, over a one point five ratio in preparations for a certain contest, and uh, he took advantage <laughs> of that. And yeah, because I had already played all the easy stuff in the genre, so yeah. But his team's coming. But it is Stallion. It is Stallion with his eighteen thousand two hundred sixty gamer score. I'll let him have this genre. I'll, I'll just get my other one back from him. And then, and T.A., another name we recognize, uh, our wonderful uh, podcast community member, Redemption Denied, 42,371 T.A. Excellent. So, yeah. Congrats, so, Red. There you go. Stallion may have more gamer score, but Red is definitely better at it than him. Mm -hmm. So there you go. He's got the higher T.A., but anyway. So... Uh, the average rating of the games, uh, uh, ho hum, two point seven five stars. So not, uh, you know, not great reviews, I guess. You know, it's a little low it's end. Right but... in the middle. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. A little more than middle, right? Middle would yeah. be two point five. But you can't. Okay, no well, wait, maybe. you can't give a zero on TA. Yeah, it's like right in the That's middle. Tr yeah, that I like how you solved that. Yeah, right in the middle for sure. So uh, let's see, highest lowest rated uh, res. Res HD, in fact, so not the low def res, but Res <laughs> HD has four whole stars. That's fantastic. And then uh, the a game I actually enjoyed. I was a little, uh, I, I guess it earns it. But yeah, one point one stars to Skelextric, Skelextric. And what is the what is the other version of that? I can't think of it off the top of my oh, head. Oh, I uh, the European I... version. Yeah. Not so good at that sort of stuff. Um, I didn't. I didn't play either of them, so I'm not 100 oh, okay. sure. But I'm going to find out if uh, we we'll right. just keep talking here for a second because it's going to be. There you go. Just oh, look tracks. up Skeletric. Tracks, yeah, with an X, tracks, right? Tracks, build it, race it. Yes. There you go. Okay, yeah. It's cool though because it has an X, right? So, um, but uh, yeah, so that game. Uh, I guess the European version is a little more popular because Skeletric is 1.1 star. So there it's also you go. impossible to and pronounce then, correctly. <laughs> there you go well they, they just like their exes like you know <laughs> i don't know and then uh most popular game uh i've actually heard of this one 100 uh crimson dragon i believe it was games with gold maybe yeah Possibly? it was i don't know it was either the first or, Once upon or time, the like it was day. really early right after the xbox one launched and i yeah. want to say it had a window uh, of availability longer than typical so it was a games yeah. with gold game, but it, it was available for longer than that window of just a month. Not a hundred percent sure though. Yeah, it was before my time. I wasn't I wasn't a G Mohunen back then. So I, I I just read that somewhere. I think maybe I don't know. Anyway, so that one's got one hundred and twelve thousand one hundred eighty six track gamers. So wow. uh, nice little number. And then the least popular with forty three whole track gamers is X Zeus. Uh, uh, the complete collection. No, it's the complete collection. So it's not, you know, you get the whole deal. So X Zeus, the complete collection. That's great. So there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Lots of fun there. And, and just <laughs> to take a quick step back, I just looked really quickly at the, um, 
the the list of games that are included and it seems like the game you're referring to before that it has unobtainables is actually rambo the video game <laughs> oh man how did i forget that rambro yes man. rambro uh, <laughs> oh, which has seven unobtainables actually so Oh, wow, so my, my it's, notes are wrong. Uh, may, well, maybe they just got unobtainable. I, it's, it's also possible <laughs> stuff was just confirmed as unobtainable because there's a process oh, to okay. that. But uh, it's not, I mean, Rambo is, uh, was released a while ago, so it's... What, is that Xbox 360 or is that Windows Phone? What is it? It is. It's not Windows Phone. Uh, it was <laughs> Xbox 360 released in February of 2014. It is not backwards oh, okay. compatible and wasn't part of that last now backwards compatibility announcement. So I guess most of uh, us are going to okay. miss out on the great Rambo, the video oh, game. That's a bummer. Yeah. I'd have to come out with a DX version soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Uh, any game that has a colon in it and then it says the video game, mm-hmm. you know it's a winner. Like blank the video game is always going to be an interesting run. So I'm always reminded of that scene in Spaceballs where he's just talking about all the merchandising potential. <laughs> yes, and Spaceballs, yeah. the toilet paper, and that's, yeah. that's always what that reminds me of. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you for tying up that loose end. That's uh, oh no problem. That's great. No problem. Yeah, yeah. I could. I I just could not remember. So. All right, so let's jump in. What, uh, according to the genre, they said immediate screen. So the player is, uh, control is limited to the immediate screen. So I was just kind of curious what constitutes immediate screen. Um, and, you know, like how that's different. I guess it has to be a game that, uh, uh, has more than one screen because there's a whole genre of games that are, you know, most notably the plat failures that all have <laughs> just one screen. But is it, uh, so is auto screen movement a must in this case? So if you can't leave the area, something's got to get you out of there, right? Right. I think that's the idea. Because if you think about games where you typically only operate in the immediate screen, it's actually point and clicks, right? Think about those mm-hmm. old school LucasArts uh, yeah, games, Boys, right? Uh, yeah. uh, Grim yeah. Fandango. You're in literally just a single screen, right? And that's what you're operating within. Mm-hmm. But it's it's that it's the quote unquote on rails movement that defines the genre. So the idea that if you're playing an on rails video game, it's almost like you're sitting on a roller coaster ride, right? If you're on mm-hmm. a roller coaster, you're strapped in. You can't go anywhere. Hopefully, that's the design. Mm-hmm. And it's the same <laughs> thing here, where you're you're strapped in. And all you can really do is move a cursor typically, and the cursor will Mm -hmm. highlight different elements, whether you have to shoot at things or you just have to interact with different things. And that's how the gameplay is structured. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a little bit of screen movement, like, so not so much that you, there's, there's no camera control, right? So Mm -hmm. this isn't like playing Gears of War where you can look up, down, left, right, see the skybox, whatever you need to do. You can only see what's in front of you, but sometimes the, sort of digital land space is or landscape is just a little bit bigger than the screen. So you can kind of look a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, but that's it. What you see is what you get and you just operate on that screen. I think. Okay. So, um, well that, yeah, that definitely opens it up. No, I, I guess technically those old uh, King's Quest games would be uh, sandbox, would they not? Since you can freely roam, the world. but we don't want to. Vi- <laughs> we don't no. want to revisit but that discussion. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to figure that out next week. But anyway, they. Uh, uh, so here you go. So I, from looking at the the games that are on the list, uh, it seems like most of them, if not all of them, I, I, I mean, I don't I, obviously I haven't played all of them, but they all have. Um, like the whole game's kind of like that. So there's different games or where they're included in multiple genres. So I guess one that, that comes to my mind is like uh, Terminator. Uh, I don't know if you played the, the Terminator game, but there's a lot of sequences where you have to like guard the, the vehicle mm-hmm. from, you know, the aliens flying around and, you know, where you're you're like shooting things that are while a something on the screen is moving is that kind of on rails where you're not actually the vehicle that's moving but you're protecting the vehicle moving and there's several games like that where you're like you know defend this as it travels to here uh and i don't know that but i don't see that game on here but i guess but, it's like in the arcades did you ever play those 
virtual cop style, like the ones where you would have the little light gun, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. And yeah. you would just you would see the scene. It would be like shoot the bad yeah. guys, don't shoot yeah. the the people right, you're trying right, to right. save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'd shoot a few of them, and then it would the camera would pan right, and you'd shoot some more. I mean, that's on rails. The, the whole idea is the movement's controlled for you. You're just along mm -hmm. for the ride, and you're just going to interact where they tell you to interact. And what I thought was interesting, and I think this is kind of what you're touching on, it seems to me like just about every game in this genre, and I didn't click through all 41, but <laughs> that is the lion's share of the gameplay. So what we found in a lot of the mm -hmm. other genres we've covered is if it sort of touches, if the game sort of has a point that touches on a genre, they'll include it in the genre classification, right? My mm -hmm. favorite example is always L.A. Noir being a puzzle game, because I guess you can argue that the figuring out of the the cases is is a puzzle element it's not a puzzle game though mm -hmm. it seems with this with on rails all of these games they're on rails like exclusively so if they're mm -hmm. games that have those components they're not included here and i i don't know if that's an intentional omission because we're going to talk about snubs and stuff like that in a moment but that that's what i'm getting from here right so, uh, i don't know if you kind of noticed the yeah, same yeah yeah i kind of do but again it's uh, it just seems like it seems like every time I start dissecting in my brain, I always get confused because now I'm thinking of all the games where I mean, just take like a beat 'em up for example. Mm -hmm. So a beat 'em up, you beat all the beat up all the guys, and then there's a little arrow that flashes that says next, and then you go to the next screen, and then you beat 'em up. So I mean, you really don't have it. You can't go backwards in most of these games. You're you're like take like a River City Ransom type game mm -hmm. or a Double Dragon. I mean, you're you like you move and then the screen locks in place you can't go right you can't go left until all the enemies are dead and then you kill them all and then an arrow pops up and says okay now you can go that way how different is that from you know you have a trigger and you're shooting the enemies and when all the enemies move it goes ahead and moves you to the next area i mean it's the same concept i think something that is left out of the definition of on rails that's just coming to mind as we're talking about it now Mm -hmm. is it seems to be requiring a first-person perspective. Okay. And all the games in here, with the exception of ones where it's racing, so there are a couple of racing games on here, like Forza Street and Yaris, um, which I find fascinating <laughs> that either of them are mm -hmm. on there. But they all involve first-person point of view. So I get what yeah. you're saying in that you're wa walking on a predetermined line, uh -huh. but it's that idea of your characters in whatever beat em up you're playing can still move up and down across the screen and left and right as you choose. In the on rails uh, game, your I face is exception. fixed looking. Oh no, that's what we're here to talk about. So what's your exception? Yes. My exception is a wonderful little gem called Men in Black Alien Crisis. Uh, that is definitely a third person game. I played it for the most part mm -hmm. and it has a, uh, I mean, basically it's like a, well, I guess that's not the only exception because uh, it basically is like a more advanced version of ACA Neo Geo Nam 1975, where you basically are rolling and getting behind things and shooting things, and then you know it's but it's a third person view, but you're controlling the character. But if you control him in the sense that they're out in the middle of the the place, you're gonna get shot, so you want to kind of hide, but. Um, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just kind of a weird slope, I guess, for me. I don't know. Yeah, like like I said before, I think the best way to think about the genre would be to again think about it as if you took a seat at the beginning of the ride, and now mm -hmm. you're just going to see what the ride is presenting to you. So I haven't played Men in Black, and I'm not a hundred percent sure how that works because I'm trying to even think about it in terms of being a third person mm -hmm. game. But and that game actually, you know, how I said that it seems like it's all exclusively on the rails. Mm -hmm. That game actually has parts where you're exploring and like you have oh, to go okay. solve a couple very minor puzzles, but you have to like shoot some people and, and kind of work your way over to somewhere. And then they'll get to parts that are definitely on rails. Like uh, there's a, a part where you're flying um, whatever their little alien spacecraft are called but you're flying around trying to blow up aliens and then you're back to on the ground and you're sneaking around and you're shooting yeah i mean it's it's i don't know there's there's definitely on rails components to it and it and they just threw it in third person uh also but interesting it's yeah it's kind of a, a weird one that's the one that really sticks out to me because i don't have a whole lot of experience with a lot of these so 
Um, so I guess that's the one that keeps popping out to me. Well, I guess but, what hmm. framed my thinking, and we'll just if, if unless you have more to discuss there, we can just jump into omissions no. and and yeah, sure, sure, snubs and all that. The, what came to my mind immediately was why something like Disneyland Adventures isn't included. Have Have you played any of that at all? I know it started um, Life as a Connect the... game, but. I played the new one that you mm-hmm. don't have to use Connect, right. the one that was in Game it's Pass. But you're exploring a lot, though. You're like walking around a, a park. I mean, it's like sandbox. Right. I would say you you are. <laughs> uh oh, the open world, open world. We know better now. Although I would have said yeah, sandbox too until yeah. you know last time. Um, but if you've played any of the of the attractions in the game, that's true. They're yeah. mostly on rails. Like when you're playing mm-hmm. the. Uh, Toy Story one, mm-hmm. and you have to defeat all the aliens coming through. That's completely on rails. Yeah, you can't control which a, way you go. Not everything right. is that way, but that gameplay right. element is very clearly present as defined on TA. So mm. that that was the big one that jumped into my mind. Is it's not primarily that way, but there are portions of the game where that's the gameplay. It is, and you can't get all the achievements. You have to get all the diamond pins. I think. And bronze and gold and silver. So you can't get through the game without interacting with the on-rail components. So Mm -hmm. that was... I I was surprised to see that excluded because it's very clearly on rails, I think. Yeah, that one's... Yeah, I I know which parts you're talking about there. It seems like they're... Man, it's been forever and a day since I played it. Mm -hmm. But um, And it seems like they had... uh, one where you're like throwing bananas at some monkeys or something, uh, maybe in like the adventure land somewhere. Yeah, there's but... like the Jungle Cruise one too, yeah. where you're trying to pilot the, right. the, it's kind the of same ship. Concept. There's another one where you're skiing. Um, there's the the Finding Nemo one where oh, okay. you're under water and you have to go with the turtles and ride the current and everything. Yeah, it so, seems like though there would be some additional genres though, wouldn't there? Then oh, not just on us. I'm sure so. you could argue if you look at all the pieces of the game it's got a rhythm match mm-hmm. component you have to dance with oh. the princesses i think music well i don't know yeah. if that's rhythm match because I, I honestly i haven't played that much of the uh by hand version you know i mm-hmm. played the connect version where you just had to pose but mm-hmm. um but yeah it's i'm sure there are other things that would count but a significant amount of the non-exploratory gameplay is on rails i think a lot of those attractions are on rails hmm well, I I mean I, I can't argue with that. I, I mean I'm not the the most thorough of uh, on that game, but uh, <laughs> I do recall some of what the ones you're talking about. And I, hey, I'm I'm on board. I mean it's kind of like the uh, we always seem to go back to the Jackbox uh, dodgeball game, a uh, Zeepal, Zeepal whatever. Dog, yep. <laughs> yeah. And so if that's dodgeball, then that little part of the game in <laughs> Disneyland should be. Uh, Definitely. I feel like TA needs to state a percentage of the game that must be of a certain genre before it gets a genre tag. Because we're going to keep going (laughs) back to that. Percentage. Forever. Well, you know, it it is. Let's see what Jackbox is. Five games? Five or six, depending on the pack. Yeah. So it's at least 20. At least 20% of the game. Right. Exactly. But, (laughs) you know, I, I could... I could see arguments for for that one in particular, and I think a good chunk of the gameplay does fall into that. Uh, but I see, yeah. as you do, when we put together our document, you threw some alphabet soup in there about games yeah. that you were thinking of. So what do you have in mind? Okay, so my goal was to not just come right out of the gates with how I really feel about On Rails. Uh, so <laughs> I've, I've made it this far. So... All right. I, I mean, I've, I've said it before. How come On Rails doesn't include freaking train games? So <laughs> you're literally on rails. Like, you can't move your train off the tracks because it is on a freaking rail. So Train Simulator, Train Simulator 2, those are two of my main gripes because I've played both of those. I just started Train Simulator 2, and let me tell you, it is just as fantastic as Train Simulator 1. Just has you on the edge of your seat. Well, not actually on the edge of your seat. You're firmly in your seat, <laughs> punching, a bu- punching a bunch of controls that you have no idea what the hell they are, and you just hope you hit the right ones and that the train starts moving. So uh, Train Simulator and Train Simulator 2, that that's 
basically all there is to it is you're sitting in a train that is on a freaking rail and you ride it for hours and hours and look at the landscapes and uh, there's a brief component where you get up and you walk so maybe that is why they're disqualifying it where you have to <laughs> enter the train but I assure you that is not the focus of the game you, although they do have some achievements in it for walking X miles and you know doing some tasks around like the stations that you land in but I, it's not uh, sandbox by any stretch the worlds that you get out and explore are very very limited in the sense that it's usually just like a train station where you can go to the other side and get in the next train and so on rails I think it's a travesty a travesty that train simulator and train simulator 2 are not they're the king of the rails and they're not on rails i mean you don't get a more in-depth <laughs> train simulator than train simulator it's aptly named uh, i mean i haven't got that far in train simulator 2 but uh you know they didn't mess up the recipe very much so um yeah, so that's there you go. That's that. I'm sorry. I, no, it's I held good. it in as long as that, I could. I think that's a fair argument. Uh, you're literally I mean, on rails. Scalextric is on is on there, right? Mm-hmm. It's a, literally a car on a rail. It's like a crappy train <laughs> racing another crappy train. They could have called right? it Crappy Train Simulator. <laughs> yeah, Try to cash in on that it. name related. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of big bucks in the train. So it, that's another thing. I, that's a topic for a whole different podcast like why the hell is train simulator got like a, a thousand dlcs and why is each one of them fifteen dollars i mean it's insane somebody bought it <laughs> <laughs> honest to know. goodness answer it's crazy it's crazy somebody right, did so it. somebody yeah they that's all the answer why do they charge that much because they can and because somebody's willing to pay mm-hmm. for it so there you go so anyway that's my big gripe and uh i mean tracks you know uh, uh p tart's favorite game uh that she used for her 500th completion she uh i'm sure she would be kind of disheartened that tracks is not included as well but that's not you know that's not that's no train simulator mm-hmm. so uh, yeah but it is technically on rails as well but um but there's a little more to that when you're building and crap so in train simulator you're not building anything you're sitting in a train and pushing a bunch of buttons. That's all you're doing. And you're just so looking ahead. There's nothing else. You're going looking at well, you can modify the camera where you can watch the train from like you're a bird or something. All right, but then and, that's uh, just third person, right? We've already established yeah, that third well, person's acceptable. That's just the change of the camera yeah. to make you feel like you're doing something because uh <laughs> it gets really boring just sitting in the cab looking straight ahead and uh there you go and and uh I don't know. So There you go. So that's my main gripe. And then I have one that is more in line with their definition. And I'm really actually kind of surprised it's not on there because it adds, it does have the auto screen movement and it is, you know, somewhat limited, like in the sense that you are not, it's moving with or without you. So the screen is moving without you. If you, okay. If you don't. Yeah. So it is no other than, a wonderful um, little crap game that uh, a lot of people liked, I think. I don't know. But it is Donuts and Justice. Um, it is a nice Rataleka rat, rat, rat. It is uh, one of the ones that came out uh, in June. And it's basically two cops and the, they're uh, just, I don't know. Uh, I don't think they're official cops i don't know maybe they're not <laughs> cops at all because they're just walking down the street just shooting everybody so i don't know exactly what i can't remember exactly what the premise was but i think they were cops because they had donuts you know and justice but uh yeah this city was definitely infiltrated with uh criminal elements and so basically it's a it's just like what what an on rails game is supposed to be you're you're walking along shooting everything and and when the auto movement screen gets to the end of the stage that's the end of the stage so uh you don't actually have to navigate anywhere you could just you know idle and and it would you know eventually you'd be at the back of the screen and i I assume it moves you i know i never tried that but i assume Mm. it moves you with it but uh it definitely is on rails uh it has it listed as a running gun so I'm not really sure. It has a little, I don't know. It says it's a running gun. I'm not, I haven't looked into what exactly defines a running gun as opposed to a, an on rails, but uh, the auto screen movement has got to 
at least nudge it in the direction of uh, a uh, on rails. I would I would imagine. Yeah, that's an interesting argument for it. I'm not familiar with the game, mm. but yeah, it sounds like that's you don't really move the screen. You're moved from point A to point B by the game itself. Yep, seems to fit and the definition. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a. Uh, imagine like a beat 'em up uh, where you where the screen never stops. Okay. And and uh, when you get to the end of the screen, if you survived, you move on to the next stage. So there you go. That's right. it. I don't. Yeah. I, I think every once in a while a boss pops up, but I mean, again, it's been a while since I played it. But yeah. But uh, yeah, that would be the only snubs I can think of. But uh, definitely Train City Miller. I mean, that's the one I feel a little more passionate about. But uh, yeah, that seems so <laughs> on the nose. <laughs> exactly or on the rails such as it oh, is but yes nicely done <laughs> yeah <laughs> so anyhow so i can't say that we either one of us are really powerhouses in this genre no um, do, do you have any positive chivo highlights that uh that come to mind when you think of this genre you know it's it's always a little hard coming to this point because I, you know, I want to pick that one real interesting achievement because I actually like the genre. I really, oh, okay. really enjoyed my time with Crimson Dragon. Oh, okay. I enjoyed uh, Blue Estate. I've played a number of them. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not very good at many things, but like I enjoyed <laughs> Child of Eden a bunch, even though the game is impossible to get any kind of score out of. Mm. I, I like the genre, and I think that's because there's a sort of it's skill based to a point, but it's it's really more just point and and interact with what you have to interact with, and it doesn't feel super overwhelming a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. But as I was looking through the list, I'm like, I don't really have a story to tell about any of these achievements because <laughs> I love Child of Eden, but again, terrible at it. I played mm-hmm. Res on the Dreamcast ages ago mm-hmm. and loved it. It's you know music and the fusion between music and gaming, and it was awesome didn't get any achievements in it not really suitable for this so as i'm looking down the list yaris is one of the games as i touched on earlier that's included in this genre which is a little weird to me but i understand it because you don't actually drive the tracks in that game the you move Mm. automatically you the only movement you really do is right to left and you have like a little gun or laser or whatever type thing Mm-hmm. Did you play that? I forget already at this point. If if you've no, that. I, uh, no, no, it's most notably right. It's a two hundred point game. What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, Yaris is most notably uh, present for people because of licensing issues. It wasn't accessible to everyone, so hmm. it was one of those games that people would load onto a USB stick and they could pass it around mm. that way because it wasn't Ooh. on the storefront for very long. The underground, the underground, right? Though. Exactly. But there's an achievement in Yaris for collecting a million coins called Leader of the Pack. Mm. And if you try to do this naturally, the way the game means for you to do so, you will take – like at this point today, however many years since the release of that game, you might finally naturally be getting there if you've played it regularly. It, it There aren't that many coins per track. <laughs> the game didn't control particularly well. It, it would not be easy. However, as you know, achievement hunters are a very determined breed. And if there's a way to break a game to make something easier to do, (laughs) they're going to figure it out. This Mm. is all outlined in the solution on true achievements. But essentially, what they found out is that you play the game with two people. And I don't remember all the specifics, but it had to do with when you get hit, I think you either lose coins or something to that effect. But you have to ride the right rail and get your car glitched into there. And once you hmm. get your car glitched, you just keep earning money. <laughs> it does not work 100% oh, it, of the time. Does it, mm-hmm. does it make you wonder who discovered that? Like, oh, sure. Like, and and how, how long did it take someone to be like, oh, I'll just try this and, and oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that all the time with Left 4 Dead, how someone figured out like, oh, on insane mode, if you just punch this tree a bunch, you'll be fine. Like, who figures this <laughs> out? But people do. And yeah. Back at that time, a friend of mine, uh, you know, figured it out and said, hey, jump in the game. I'll help you. We got it done pretty much no trouble. Uh, But it's the glitch is just that it's a glitch. It doesn't always work well. I have been I've helped people with the achievement before. Sometimes fourth, fifth try, we get it. No problem. Other times we spend an hour and a half and can't get it to go. 
And just <laughs> we'll try it again next time. So in terms of individual achievements, this was definitely the most memorable of the bunch that fell into on rails for me. I know you seem a little more reserved about the on rails genre than I do, but did any achievements stand up to you? I mean, that was fantastic. Uh, that was an awesome story. I, I nerd that one. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, that, you, you wouldn't. And I'll, I'll put it out there. If anyone still has Yaris and wants to, and I can't figure out if I want to say Yaris or Yaris, so I'm just yeah. flip flopping throughout. But if you have it and you want to try to go for it, I'm happy to try to help. There's not going to be 100% <laughs> success rate. It is a 200 gamer score total <laughs> Xbox Live Arcade game. However, if that's something you want to get out of your backlog, just let me know. I, I still have access to the game. That's awesome. All right. Uh, when you first said that, I was I was I was racking my brain trying to figure out because you kept saying uh, Yaris, and I was thinking, I, I feel like I know this game, but then I, I realized I was thinking of Yars Yars. Oh, Yars Revenge. The, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Yars Revenge back in the Which day. Which is also and, on uh, Rails. That, that's... Okay. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. It works. Yeah. So, yeah. I wonder if it was a naming you know, similarity on purpose. Mm. Uh, yeah. But but I was looking at your uh, score on it and. Like you were in uh, two thousand two hundred. What? Uh, oh man, I just clicked off of it. You were like uh, two thousand uh, two hundred and ninety sixth place Ooh. in the, on TA in well uh, on rails with your whopping twenty nine hundred gamer score there. So that's not terrible. I consider <laughs> no, I'm not. I have a two hundred gamer score. I, you know what? I don't know if you could figure this out real quick, but I have uh-huh. not played Tracks or Skelectrix. Oh. Which would be another two thousand gamer score. That is, yeah. And I'm sure that, that would, would move me significantly fly. up the boards if I was that trying. That is, uh, that would move you right neck and neck with Chin Doctor, oh. who is number five hundred and ninety fourth. Okay, so because that's uh, I have my friends list, so yeah. So basically, that's where we put you. So. All right. Yeah, and uh, I, I, uh, I mean, again, I'm never really gone out of my way and by never really i mean i have never gone out of my way to play an <laughs> on rails game and somehow i've ended up with almost six thousand wow. ta in it yeah or gamer score in it and so i'm at number 348 somehow uh i was looking at my list of games on it and it's uh, uh well you know skeletric and <laughs> tracks and then uh ACA Neo Geo twice, and uh, then uh, Heavy Fire Shattered Spear I got for like a dollar at GameStop once upon a time. Nice. It's like a really crappy, yeah. And, and then Men in Black. And then the last one, which I was going to mention, which is not complete, uh, with a muffed completion of 11 of 12 achievements, oh, no. which is uh, Laser Life. So are you familiar with Laser Life? It's, I am uh, not, no. So you're going okay. to fill me in. It's it's a uh, it's listed as on rails slash music, and so basically it's you have to kind of you're it's I don't know I would say it's almost a twin stick as well because you're literally using the left stick and the right stick and really nothing else. Uh, I think you may have to hit a button in tune with the beat every once in a while. Okay. So, uh, but basically it's uh you're in outer space and uh, you're like flying through all your memories it's like you're a dead astronaut hence the title art you died in space somehow i can't remember how and uh spoiler alert and then uh yeah and so uh you're collecting all your memories and when you collect all the memories it shows like some memory like uh you i I remember one was something to do with like his family dog it was kind of a sad game like you finish um you finish like the stage and then it shows you like this nice emotional thing about like he remembers when he had this wonderful dog and he'll miss him or something like that. It was just kind of a downer game, right? And so uh, it's only worth 1,400 TA uh, total. And uh, most of it's on this final achievement. I don't, and it's one of those achievements that's like, like, I guess it's, it's got a two ratio. So I guess you actually have to kind of try, but it's like I don't know. It just was not working for me. It's two hundred gamer score too, so it's like a it's like the big one, and it's, so it's collected every memory fragment in all of your memory. So you have to basically get a perfect on every stage and uh, to get this two hundred pointer. And I spent uh, probably not as much time as merited, obviously, because I didn't earn it. But mm-hmm. I I got through like the first stages, and it seems like it doesn't even really keep. I even kept notes on it, like. Oh. Because it seemed like, yeah, it was you like, were determined. It, it does, you were actually yeah, like, really uh, making an effort at this. Yeah, I was. I actually showed a little effort. I didn't do a 2.0 effort. This, I only gave it about <laughs> a 1.75 effort. And, uh, but yeah, it, was, it, it seems like it doesn't keep track of it somehow. Maybe it does. And I just didn't know how, but it, I couldn't figure out how 
for it to show me which stages I had perfected or not. And so I kept a, like a little sheet and I marked them off as I did them. And, and I don't even know where that sheet is now. And I just, and there was one stage I just said, the hell with you. I'm mean, done with this. <laughs> and, uh, and I haven't gone back. And, uh, so my last achievement when it was, uh, yeah, it's been a good two years plus. So yeah, I, I, well, I, I kind of got sick of it four years ago and then I briefly went back to it. It seems like it came up on my RTDO. And so two years later I revisited it and that's when I did all the notes and stuff. And I just like, okay, I'm, I can't do this. I, I'm a suck at rhythm games and it's just not my thing. So, but it's really frustrating because it's like real sensitive on the, on the thumbstick. So maybe someone else out there can give me some hints on how to be good at this game. I don't know. Or maybe someone else is just like, Oh, he's right, man. That game. Oof. Oof. Like, uh, you know, I'm yeah. looking at my friends list and I have more people that played this game than I thought. And I'm guessing it's cause that 1400 overall mm-hmm. TA score is attractive to people, right? It's going to be somewhat easy or whatever. Right. But I'm noticing that I, I have 15 people on my list who completed the game but then mm-hmm. I have 13 people on my list who are exactly in the same situation as you. So <laughs> the this and the have not, is yeah. not that uncommon, apparently, to not get oh, that yeah. last one. Yeah, it's so easy just to move on. And it's like, mm-hmm. ah, okay, this is going to take a little too much work. I guess it's just for those hardcore completionists. But, I mean, it's over 200 TA or TAD, I guess, for a certain contest. But, I mean, again, if I was to pick it up at this point i wouldn't have a clue which stages i perfected and which ones i had and right uh, i don't know it's just uh yeah, it's no that dream I'm not is going over that. Yeah. yeah i'm not going through that whole game again Uh-oh. it's just gonna stay muffed forever so there you go sad face so. well it's not just you you can take some solace yeah. in that there you go so, so. <laughs> you can join the uh mental night hasn't uh i'm, I'm calling out people now oh i'm jesus so you know planting <laughs> come on guys oh, wow. you all we're, need to make list- a support group Oh, X the Hero, finish. Mental Night, Mental Night, Snipe by a Girl. Yeah, I mean, so I, I see a couple of them. There. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> you, you you can work together with some folks and maybe yeah. come together and, and figure out how to finish this game. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not going to work with Mental Night, though, because he, he just challenged me to some challenge that I haven't really looked into. But he Uh-oh. just challenged me, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully the challenge wasn't to, you know, to make the finals of the G test because you know how he does that on that. Right. So. Well, hopefully it also wasn't finished laser life before him. Yeah, I was oh, no, not too. <laughs> I'm going to wake up next time and it'll be like, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to challenge him to That's do that. That's it. Just, just make a TA I have challenge. No intention. I have no intention of ever doing this. So I'm going to challenge him and he's going to think that, uh, so before this releases, he's going to think that I actually want to challenge him in that because he just challenged me in something else. So, the joke is, is that I have no intention of finishing this. So hopefully he spends the time to actually <laughs> oh, no. uh, do this and feels proud about himself. And then I'll laugh at him if he did it. So there right. you go. Mental, this this episode's dedicated to you. <laughs> Evil. All right. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway. I, I think, um, you know, I think we're about ready to wrap up. Feels like yep, we've kind of yep. covered most of the big topics we wanted to cover. Uh, I, I'm like I said already. I feel like I have a bit more fondness of uh, toward it than you do because I, I don't know. I just find something relaxing about them in general. I think something has to do with the achievement lists a little bit too. The achievement mm-hmm. lists tend to involve like experience points or levels or you know S ranks and things like that. And I'm terrible at S ranks, but in my head somewhere I'm like, well, none of the pieces are random. Usually they're pretty static, so I just have to remember it. So. I like them, but I, I get the feeling this uh, this is a genre you could leave behind. Yeah, I mean, any genre that basically snubs the whole premise of the of the genre, uh, you know, it's like, you know, we're gonna name this genre after a certain mechanic of a certain you know type of vehicle, but nah, we're not gonna include any games that actually uh, <laughs> that we named it after. <laughs> so uh, to me, I, I, I until they correct that uh you know but also the I, to me it, it eliminates a lot of what a, what is fun in a game which is to kind of explore on your own so i don't know it's to me it's kind of like an interactive dvd or something like you're just gonna you know the ones you know it's kind of like the, the video games where you have the where you 
at the arcade, you're shoving all the quarters into mm-hmm. them. I guess you'd probably slide cards now, but whatever. <laughs> but do uh, but you know what I'm talking about? Where it's like just a gun, and you're just shooting everything, and then slowly they kill you, and then mm-hmm. you put in more credits, and then you just keep going, and it's just like a interactive movie almost. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's just, that's that's a fair assessment. That that's a lot yeah. of what they are. You're not incorrect yeah. about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. All right. Well, I chose this genre. So as is our normal, that means we're switching up. So did you have any hints for next time? Oh, I got two words for you. Antler rats. All right. There you go. Think on that. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you again, Em, for uh, joining me. Anytime. And and, uh, until next time. Take care, guys. Later. Previously on Achievement Hunting 101. I tested it out today because I did buy this a while ago when it was on sale. I don't know if I got this good of a deal, but um, it plays like a an NES platformer. So, um, you know, you can uh, double jump, you can air dash, you can dash on the ground. You have a basic sword attack, and I don't believe it upgrades. I, I really felt like, man, if this game just had upgraded attacks... It could be a, a whole lot better, but it plays like an NES uh, platform, like kind of smash and, you know, uh, smash and bash. You know, I'm pretty sure I just coined that term. Um, I think it's fun. I think $2. Cool. Yeah, why not? Um, what, what do you say, Waka? You want to race? Ooh. <laughs> Are you trying to lose? Challenge. Challenge. I mean, Maybe accept it. We'll find it out. sounds up his alley. Hello. I'm Waka Bale. And last week, I was challenged by Rotke Dude to finish Infinite Beyond the Mind before he did. The game had a mere 24 starters on TA with one single completion, despite being released more than one and a half year ago in May of 2020. Normally $9, it was discounted to $2, yet no new players emerged on TA. I had picked it up in a previous sale, but hadn't started it yet. But honestly, the game is worth its $9 price tag. Considering it was made by a single developer, Emily Koyo, Infinite Beyond the Mind is very impressive. The outsourced shiptune soundtrack by Defense Mechanism is also very good. The game is very light on the story, and can be summed up as Evil Queen is evil, go punch her and her minions. Infinite is a pixel art action platformer with a few side-scrolling shoot-em-up levels. It closely resembles a run and gun, but be- aside from uh, the shoot-em-up levels, the game's heroines Tanya and Olga don't use guns. They use their magic-powered fists, which resemble sword strikes and superhuman speed. Kushmus tried out the game hoping you would get upgraded attacks, and you do get more and more powerful the further you progress, increasing your moveset and upping your strength. You can also extend your health bar by finding health crystals. Infinite Beyond the Mind is set in the near future. Most enemies are human soldiers or military vehicles, but the game constantly serves up new enemy types for its roughly 2 hour campaign. While most enemies move as if in slow motion, the player can move very fast, punching soldiers, tanks and fight jets into pieces, often before they can fire their weapons. Enemies are not walking death boxes that hurt you if you touch them, they only deal damage when attacking, and they are not aware of you until they see you, meaning you can easily run through most ordinary soldiers before they even fire their guns. If the game is good, even great, How come there are so few starters, you might wonder. The first achievement will be for defeating the queen, right before completing the game, unless you max out your life bar before doing so, meaning it takes quite a bit of effort to get infinite beyond the mind on your tag. The completion takes significantly more effort, as you need to play through the game at least four times, but you might need a few more for the extremely tight one hour run. The three difficulties do not stack, and you also have to finish the local co-op mode. The co-op mode is excellent and handles the two players on a single screen very well, with some forgiving mechanics allowing very different skill levels to make meaningful contributions. 
as you have to beat the queen in co-op for one achievement. I played through the entire game with my 5 year old and we both had a good time, for the most part. Some end game platforming proved too much for her, but the game thankfully allows a single player to do the trickier parts themselves, as players do not instantly respawn, but have to actively do so after dying, or when changing levels. A single player could play through the co-op using both controllers, but it would be rather annoying, as you'd have to move both players or sacrifice lives very often to only have one player on screen and the bosses get twice as much health. It would technically be easier than the normal difficulty, but it would be tedious. The major difference between easy and normal is that in easy you have more lives and respawn where you die, while on normal mode the game resets to the closest checkpoint. Expert mode is very difficult, you have a very short health bar and only start with one extra life. The kicker is that you can't save your progress in expert mode and you have to start over from the beginning if you run out of lives instead of being able to continue at the start of the level. Enemy and boss health don't change in single player and you do not have the screen clearing special attack in expert mode, which is very useful for bosses and speedrunning. The one hour speedrun requires an almost perfect run and I do not see it possible on any other difficulty than easy. Thankfully you can save between levels, meaning you perfect the time for one level at a time, then move on to the next level once you've got a good enough time. Most levels are usually 2-3 to three minutes. I completed the game getting the neutral ending below an hour, but it didn't count. It appears that you need to complete the good ending below an hour, which has two more bosses than the neutral ending. The bad ending might work as well, but it too has two extra bosses. Be warned that time between missions and in menus count, so don't leave the game running when taking a break. Back out to the main menu if you are not playing. There are also achievements for low kill and high kill runs, which unlock at the end of the game. Low kills is fairly easy as long as you only kill enemies that prevent you from progressing. High kill however is a bad achievement as it tasks you with killing more enemies than there are in the game. You have to intentionally die and replay a few levels to hit the kill target. I had to play the final level 5 times, killing myself before the boss and choosing continue to hit the required kill count. Maxing your health bar is rather easy on easy difficulty, but if you haven't done it before the final level, there is a secret area at the bubble room which maxes out your stats. There are four white armored guardians held at gunpoint you need to save for an achievement, which unlocks at the end of the game. The first is located on level 10-1 on the upper path, the second on level 11-2 hidden behind a semi-hidden tunnel to the upper left before the tricky platforming section near the end of the level, the third can be found in 12-1 below the main path right before you have to make some long jumps. You can tap down twice to look down. The fourth and final guardian is on level 13-1 near the rooftops. You will have to kill the soldiers holding them at gunpoint before he spots you or he will execute the guardian. The guardians will then help you on level 14 and I believe they have to survive the level for the achievement to unlock at the end of the game. Finally, there's an achievement for completing a minigame at the Hidden Queen portrait, which is located above you as you start the final level. You need to dash and double jump to get up to the painting. Completing the minigame also allows you to skip most of the level, which is especially useful on normal and expert difficulty as the level is rather difficult. The completion is around 20 hours, but it is difficult to pinpoint as it is highly dependent on skill. By the time I completed Infinite Beyond the Mind, Rocky Dude had yet to buy the game. The game by far exceeded my expectations, but it is not for the average achievement hunter. Achievements are relatively few and far between, and some require a high degree of skill and dedication. A local co-op partner is also very beneficial, but not required, even if a second controller is. By completing it, I single-handedly dropped its TA from 3500 
to 2600. With only 25 starters, it doesn't take much to swing the TA in either direction. But as I mentioned, it is not easy to get on your tag, with the earliest achievement possible being getting a second hidden life crystal on level 4 while playing on easy, which is at least 15 minutes of playtime. I'm in awe of anyone who can develop a decent game by themselves. A solo developer putting together an awesome game is incredibly rare. If you're not a completionist or you're up for the challenge, I highly recommend Infinite Beyond the Mind. Have a nice day everyone!